Woo! Hello everyone and welcome back to another Pokemon card live stream. Tonight we have Blue Sky Stream and Towering Perfection, just like it says in the title. Ooh, take a look at them all the way from Japan. Holy heck, that's a long way to go. Are you guys excited for these? So these just arrived and they have Rayquaza and Duraludon in them. I believe this one also has Gyarados and Dragonite in it, I think. I don't remember everything in Towering Perfection. I should go look it up, actually. But I was hoping to just kind of be surprised by the pulls tonight as you guys open them up. Oops. All right. You want to see the alternative art Rayquaza? Me too. All right, let's move this over side. This is some Yoshi story playing, by the way. I tell you what, I'll also crack these open. Why don't I just cut them open right now? New Pokies, that's right. Man, Pokemon's been making new Pokemon cards very quickly. Are those Evo Skies? Presumably, this is what Evolving Skies will look like, yes. See? You can order in the description. What? Nuh uh. Oh, let me go update the description. I'm going to add that how to order video to the description. I was supposed to do that. Excuse me, I was supposed to do that yesterday. All right, get shareable link. How to order. All right. All right, there we go. Woo, sorry about that. Yeah, so what I did there was I added the how to order video to the description. I should have done that yesterday. Alex is here. He says, use my $18 for two packs of Evolving Skies. Now, Mr. Alex, which one do you want? Blue Sky Stream or Towering Perfection? Because it's two different sets, right? There are two different sets. All right, let me go ahead and put these card savers off to the side. There we go. I got my drink. Alex says, blue sky. You got it, Alex. Alex, I tell you what, we'll start the stream out with your two, two packs right now. We'll call it Alex Privilege. All right, here they are. So these are blue, uh, blue sky stream. It's a long name, huh? Blue sky stream. And I believe towering perfection and blue sky stream together is what you think evolving skies is. Or is, is, is what it will become. Although I wonder if the Eevee heroes will also be mixed in there. What are these? Got some top loaders. Just toss those over there. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at this. It's Dragonite. How nice. Now, I have a limited amount of it tonight, okay, guys? So I might run out. But I don't think I'll raise the price over $7. I think $7 is as high as I could. That's about as high as I can ask without feeling really bad. Okay, so Alex, PSX, congratulations on your new Dragonite. Oh, mister. Here it is, Alex, PSX. I remember when Champion's Path came out. Whew, those were selling so high because the demand for those were freaking insane, man. People would pay anything to open up Champion's Path, which is really sad now because Champion's Path has been so overprinted. It's, uh, yeah, it's like not even rare anymore. The music is so fire. You like the uh, you like the Yoshi music? I'm a big fan. Oh, what is this? <laughs> is that a box of Digimons? Give me a second. A box of Digimons down here. There we go. <laughs> I ordered 22 minutes ago. Don't miss it. All right. Believe it. <laughs> Give me a second. The new Japanese booster boxes do not guarantee a secret rare. Yeah, I heard about that. More Yoshi music. Mister, can I buy a whole box? Says Karina. I suppose you could. No Taylor Peterson read description. What? All right, here we are. So. <laughs> this is like the beach version of the music, right? I just want to make sure that I don't miss anyone who tried to do pre-orders and stuff like that. Am I 
Anthony Haymeyer appears to be the first order. And he says, CGC Tier 1 with subgrades for my Japanese Suicune. Thank you very much. All right. Sounds good. Oh, by the way, I did sort out a spot on the shelf behind me where I can put bags now, that the, the abandoned bags. Uh, but I haven't actually taken them off the table because I spent most of my day doing other things. Mr. Anthony Amire, where am I going to find his bag? Down here? Let's see. Here he is. <laughs> Does he have two bags? Is that what's going on? That says Anthony Haymire. Okay, he must have two bags. Let's find his other bag then. We'll combine them. Because that does, definitely does not have a Suicune in it. <laughs> Claim one abandoned bag? Nah. <laughs> Although I have gotten rid of a number of them that only had like hollows in them. <laughs> Not two of them in the same box, surely. Amos, Alejandro, Martinez, Andre, Andrew. Oh, he did have two bags in the same box. Okay. Cool. And that is a single holo card. Very interesting. What, does he have three bags? Anthony. Anthony, that's too many bags. Help me out and always tell me if you have a bag, okay? We'll go looking for it. My fan off? I'll turn my fan on, man. It's hot in here. Those musty Missouri nights. So humid out here in Missouri. Cheese, Andras, Alexander Hurst, Christopher Martinez. Whoa, that's loud. <laughs> Can you tell me where did you buy Blue Sky Stream? Uh, from Japan, mister. All right, throw this up here. I don't know where your bag is, man. He's saying he has a Suicune. I'm gonna call this bag number two for now because he probably does have another bag somewhere and I just don't know where it is. Number two, I'll write a note of it. I don't wanna to spend too much time looking for your missing bag. Let me make sure I got that right. It is Anthony Haymire, right? Yeah, Anthony Haymire. It's UFC bag. Uh, yes, it is. UFC is here. There we go. Wait, is he the guy who had... Oh, I'm so dumb. I know where his bag is. I'm so dumb. He sent one of these in. So, Mr. Anthony has one of these. That's why I couldn't find it, because it's over here. Here it is. Suicune. Problem solved. Make sure it's the right Suicune. Okay. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> All right. And and it really his bag should not say number two on it. I'll go ahead and erase that. Holy Jesus, man. I tell you what, there's so much stuff to remember. I don't lose my mind. <laughs> That's going to be C. One plus Anthony. Amire. I'm gonna know it's him. I couldn't get his last name all onto the card, but I know it's him because it's the same. It's the same Beckett shield. All right, let me go ahead and turn the fan on. It is definitely musty in here. What the heck? All right, the fan's coming on. Woo! Boneless wings are chicken nuggets. That's right. All right, are you guys ready? So, next up, we got Devin Kawamura. He says, sorry for the super early pre-order. One in the gym challenge, first edition box break. Whoa. Mr. Devin, going deep, man. So, Devin is going to be in the box break. I hope you guys will join us uh, as well. There it is, Devin Kawamura. So that's seven packs, and when the large ends, which it will pretty soon, actually, it'll be eight packs. Wow. It's moving a little bit. 
Who's next? Mr. James Gower. He says, open up half tires and half sky stream, sending you a hundred ahead of time, so I don't know your prices yet. Oh, James just says do it. Okay, so that would be... Uh, well, hold on, let's see. What's 100 divided by 7? 14. Okay, so it's 14 times 7. Okay, so you'll be, uh, you have $2 left over. And it's funny that you did that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's James Gower. And let me get the towering perfection. Ooh, towering perfection. Both sets look pretty cool. What is this Yoshi music? <laughs> this music is so like the hip hop or something. It's so weird. <laughs> it sounds like uh, 80s uh, bass music. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Woo! 14 packs. You ready, Mr. Gower? I only smoke Evil Bricks when UFC is not available. <laughs> oh my god. UFC has arrived. Sneep. Some deep sneeps, man. Sneep. All right. Are you Gruffindor or Slytherin? Uh, oh, good question. I'm Hufflepuff. I don't know. What are the other options? Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw? There's Gyarados. I would start my own group with a better animal. Uh, the Armadillo wins. There you go. <laughs> Cold. Here's Jumpluff. Only UFC card I want is Kimbo Slice. Ooh, and the Rayquaza V. Nice. Armadillo wins. <laughs> Cold. And also cold. All right. So you pull Gyarados and Rayquaza V cards out of your sky blue stream. Now we've got towering perfection. 61 degrees in the Bay Area. Is that good or bad? I like that it's so hot in Missouri. You know, in the past when I was younger, I actually hated how hot it would get out here. It's not that it gets like blazingly hot, but it gets like humid hot. You know what I mean? Like you're just... It, almost like you're by the ocean, except you're not even by the ocean. And nowadays, I don't care because I actually live next to a lake. And having hot... Oh, there you go. Now, what is this mister's name? I don't even remember his name. He's the dragon gym leader, right? I don't remember his name, though, guys. You guys will have to help me out here. Ooh. All right. Very nice. That's a hit. Rayhan. Rayhan? It's Rayhan. Is it Rayhan? His name's D's Nuts. And black or white Kyurem. I don't know if he's black or white. That's Connor McGregor. <laughs> That's not a waifu. I'm sorry. Waifus only. Waifus only. All right, Mr. James. Very nice. Here are your pulls. All right. How do I get a pack? This is Easton Reviews. You go, me, 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 me. And then I go, okay, here you go. Thank you so much, mister. Let's see what's next. Justin Huerta says, good evening. I'd like a spot in the gym challenge custom. You got it, Mr. Justin. All right, I'm telling you, this is moving. Now that there's just a few spots left, this will very likely sell out. Like in one live stream, I wouldn't be surprised. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six spots remaining in the gym challenge large. Remember, the gym challenge large is going to give you a 1 in 19 odds of pulling a gym here, a gym challenge booster pack. See, even I'm doing it. I'd still call it hero. And, uh, of course, the other 18 guys are just going to get, like, a holographic card. So you could be disappointed. Oh, man, I want this in English, the Rocket Snorlax. So hard to pull. I like this Houndour. Houndour? Yeah, I like this Houndour. Oh, man, that's an Erica's Venusaur 10? I didn't even know I had that.
two espions. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Get some cool slabs. That's Dark Espion from Neo Destiny. He's really, really expensive in English to get a PSA 10 first edition. If you can even find them, because they're, they're rarely for sale. Okay. Eric Lovato says four, Blue Sky String. You got it, Eric. One, two, three, four. Mister, when you get to my order, I messed up and sent the difference already. Sounds good. Mr. Eric. Sneep. All male trainers must be Sneep to send a Nintendo a message. That's right. We only want girls. Who's this? Oh, you got Rayquaza VMAX. How nice. Cold. If too many people order Blue Sky Stream, I will probably raise this price by a dollar because I would like to run out of these sets at the same time. So this goes to Mr. Eric. Oh, Eric. I don't know if people would do that because I think both sets are pretty cool. Um, however, I'm worried that the Rayquaza might be a reason that people would just go after one. Kel oh, I'm sorry. We got Rudolph Gabriel Zarat. He says two boxes of Blue Sky Stream. Okay, yeah, the price is going up on Blue Sky Stream. That's exactly what I'm kind of worried about. We'll just run out of one and not the other. So let me go ahead and refresh and find out the last person to order. So we're refreshing the, uh, I'm refreshing the stream, uh, not the stream, the list. So the last person to order is Mr. Alexander Hewitt. I can see it right here. And anyone after him, you will need to pay a different price for Blue Sky Stream. Because I do not want, th I want them to run out at roughly the same time. So, let's see. Scrolling down, scrolling down. We don't want we don't want some people taking all of one set, you know what I mean? And then and then everyone else is stuck buying the other one. Maybe I should have, you know, maybe I should have designed it so that you had to buy them at the same time, you know what I mean? I did that with um I did that with Battle Styles. Do you guys remember that? How many UFC boxes are there? I've got a single UFC box and it's the same like 10 packs or something like that. Is it 10 or 12 packs? I can't remember. All right, so Rudolph, he wants two boxes. Give me a moment, Rudolph. So Rudolph, I'll need to go grab the two boxes right now. taking all the blue sky stream there's gonna be none left there's gonna be none left he said yeah i'll open all that you got it rudolph but no seriously that that actually takes out a lot of what i had i don't have a, i i should have mentioned this at the start of the stream i don't actually have a lot of either of these i received one little order of these about enough for one stream to be honest all right yeah, he's going to take all of the Blue Sky Stream. Stop! I hope you get good pulls. Okay, oops. When people start ordering two boxes or something, that's a pretty big sign. Uh, I shouldn't have made a video of myself opening a box of each of these because I just don't have that much for tonight. But it's like, ah, that's got to be my policy or something from now on. Because I should I should have a recording of every new set, just a regular video recording. It's so silly of me not to get that done. You know what I mean? All right, here goes. Here it goes. So there is a Golden Frost Last and a Golden Cresselia in these sets. There's also a Golden Metal Energy card and a Golden Electric Energy card. How cool. Sneep. 
limit pack purchases. That would be another strategy, but here we are. If somebody wants to open a lot, they can do so, but they will just have to probably pay a little extra. That's that's all. Here it goes. Rudolph. And the price on these will definitely come down. I promise. Okay, so let's see. Same with Eevee Heroes, by the way. Like, if you guys look at the cost of Matches Fighter and Silver Lance and Jet Black Spirit, you'll go see the all those packs are like $4 a pack. So the price on those really did move down. You just had to wait a little while. Cold. Here, oh, right off the bat. So there's your secret rare, Volcarona. Looking great. By the way, I want to mention something. I love this Pokemon. I like Tyranitar. And did you know Volcarona and Tyranitar are both based off of Godzilla monsters? I always, you know, and I didn't know that right away. I just always thought Volcarona looked really cool. Like a fire moth. One of my, definitely one of my favorite bug Pokemon if you're talking about powerful Pokemon. Okay, here's Salamence. Yeah, Volcarona is awesome. Gyarados. Okay, lots of Gyarados in Blue Sky Stream. Whoa, whoa, mister, I'm telling Jinx. <laughs> Here he is again. Look at the artwork, man. Dude, they stepped it up on the artworks. This looks way better than some of the artworks we were seeing in the uh, earlier Sword and Shield sets. Like, this looks hand-drawn, you know what I mean? They're doing artworks that just look like 3D printed graphics from, like, the early 2000s Veggie Tales style, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it looked really bad for a while. But that's looking really nice. Uh, the Slow King from Matchless Fighters looked really nice, too. I keep thinking this is Pikachu, but it's Sandshrew. Cold. Here's, oh, Rayquaza. Nobody expected Rayquaza. Okay, lovely Rayquaza. Here's Dragonite. It's Dragonite. No, mister, it's definitely Pikachu. <laughs> Pikachu of the Sand. <laughs> Gyarados VMAX. All right. Wow, Mr. Can't even tell the difference between Pikachu and Sandshrew. Fake fan. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that, actually. He said the name wrong. He's not a true Pokemon collector. My collection is probably bigger than most people's collection, even as a kid. And now I'm an adult, and it's definitely bigger. Not a real collector. Oh, you put a price card to a card? Uh, uh, not a price card. You put a price to a card? Not a real collector. People get really upset if you put a price on a card. You know what I mean? Pokemon cards aren't for selling. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? That's the whole idea. Everyone understands that different cards have different amounts of value. When I pull uh, an energy card, it's probably worth a penny. And when I pull Charizard, he's probably worth a lot. And that's why you trade me all your cards for my Charizard, right? So the value of cards is like, <laughs> what is this music? The value of the cards is very close to what it is to collect. We don't collect just random dirt. Well, that would be like a hoarder, right? We collect gems. We collect gold. We collect diamonds. So we're after the valuable Pokemons. And that's very normal. And, and some people will just collect a Pokemon that they like, even if it's not valuable. Which is normal, too. But it's not the only aspect of collecting. What is this music? We jumped ahead. All right. <laughs> We're trying to be pokey rich. Yeah, some people are really opposed to the idea of becoming pokey rich. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> what? No, you're only allowed to collect the energy cards, and you're meant to be poor like me. I think that is, it goes kind of along with the whole, um, you know, there's something, there's something modern going on on social media, where it's like, if you're, if you're well off, if you're wealthy, you're meant to be like hated, you're like an oppressor or something. And the victims and the, the righteous are the poor people or something like that. That kind of feeling. You know what I'm talking about? It's a feeling, right? It's a feeling. And it's it's definitely a social media thing. And it actually spills over right over here in Pokemon cards. It's like, oh, you're making money on Pokemon? You're evil. <clears throat> it's like nobody makes more money on Pokemon cards than Pokemon. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you know the, the company, Pokemon. They're a for-profit company, right? <laughs> Just wait till you find out that the Pokemon company does this for money. <laughs> Pokemon's not a true collector. Nintendo's fake. They're just in it to get Pokey rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nintendo's only in it to get rich. 
Did you see that they have publicly traded stocks? Whee! <laughs> I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Here it goes. Yeah, so there's like, it's, it's definitely kind of a, like a moralist sort of thing. It's all about morality. And being poor is moral, and being well off is immoral, you know what I mean? And it's, it's like, people aren't as religious in terms of like organized religion anymore, but they are just as religious as ever. And social media is sort of like the megaphone for that moralism. And you can get popular on social media for being extra moral, you know what I mean? This person's a bad, you know what I mean, judging others. That, that's very popular in religion, isn't it? It's very popular to judge others. And so, yeah, you get people, they're not religious or they're not trying to be, but they are. They're just super moralistic. Oh, I hate that they would make any money on Pokemon cards. Meanwhile, the Pokemon company making millions of dollars on Pokemon cards. It's like, okay, calm down. <laughs> Professional virtues. Oh, very nice. Um, Jelly, that's the Gyarados. What do you guys think of this Gyarados? You think it's as good as the Crimson Invasion Gyarados? Let me go get that real fast. Give me a second. You guys gotta see the Crimson Invasion one. So another Gyarados. Uh, I'm a huge Gyarados fan. So I'll definitely be picking that card up. But give me a minute. Oh, here it is. Now, I know I've got the Rainbow Rare version for Crimson Invasion, but you tell me which artwork you like better. Look at this. Sun and Moon era, Sword and Shield era. Which one's better? Crimson's better? That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. What a fantastic card, man. And this comes out of the Crimson Invasion collection. By the way, we have more Crimson on the way. I haven't offered Crimson in a while, uh, but I saw the prices on Crimson had gone down, and so we are going to be offering Crimson again. So Crimson's on the way right now, by the way. All right. Whew. I do like Crimson. Damn near the same. They're very similar, yeah. I think the Crimson Invasion one just looks a little more ferocious. Salamis, I think they did well with that Salamis Hollow, by the way. Oh! Gyarados V. Boop! Family dollars are stocking crimson. <laughs> really? A Trebonaut! Woo! Cold. Cold. Crimson Invasion has that Gyarados. It also has two girl cards in it. It's got the Olivia card and the Luzamine card. And then it also has, I believe, Full Art uh, Water Secret Energy, which is pretty cool as well. But that's about it. Unless you're a fan of like Buzzwool or Kartana, which there are fans of every Pokemon out there, but there's probably not too many Alone Executor, probably not a lot of Alone Executor fans out there, but those are all Pokemon you gotta collect. Gotta collect them all, right? Cold. Here's Dragonite. All right. Got 15 Sword and Shield base set sleeve booster pack from Dollar Tree. Wow. That's that's a lot of Pokemons. Cold. What is this music, man? I'm going to start dancing. Zygarde. Cold. No love for my boy Silvalli. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Silvalli is in there, too. Yeah, Silvalli. He's in there. He's in Cosmic as well. Is he also in, uh, what's it called? Ultra Prism? He might also be in Ultra Prism. Trevenant. And Rayquaza VMAX. Wow. Quite a lot of cards, actually. That was for our friend Rudolph Zerate. What's up, Rudolph? Wow, thanks for going so deep, man. That's really cool. You got an awful lot of hollows over here. Now let's take a quick look at these. You can you play the mirror B B song? Mirror B. What the? What are these sound effects? This is Yoshi Stories music. So secret rare Gyarados. I'm liking this Gyarados V V Max actually. That looks pretty cool. Volcarona and Volcarona, and these are your two pulls, your two hot pulls. There you go, Mr. Rudolph. 
Rudolph, you did better than me, I think. I had a pretty rough round. All right. Woohoo! Now we have Eric Lovato, two live customs for Eric Lovato. Eric, do 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 do. Oh snap, what's this? You got the little cutie pie Snorlax. See, look, he's got a little Torchic on his head. He's got some pee pee chews. And that's from Unbroken Bonds. That's actually a valuable card. I actually sent some of those off to grade. I like them so much. And Zoroark. So you got two cold ones. Let me toss in a little bonus for you, okay? Here's a little bonus EV VMAX. So you pick up a little VMAX as well. And that's for Eric Lovato. Here you go, Eric. But those were two cold packs. So the bonus is just to be nice. Next up, we got Mr. Tenzenberg. How's it going, Tenzenberg? One Blue Sky Stream Japanese pack. Tenzenberg, need a new baggie. How's it going, man? Tenzenberg, you gonna jump in the gym challenge box? Come on, man, get in there. <laughs> I'm just teasing. It's pretty expensive. It's like that's like a that's like a financial choice, you know, like in life. <laughs> you pull. Ah, it's a cold one. There's Tropius. He's got his nanners hanging from his neck like a rooster. So strange that that Pokemon can fly, isn't it? It's like, Tropius learns to fly? The frick? Flying on my Tropius. Jose Ponce, five blue sky. All right, everyone's ordering the same one. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Sneep. Here we are. Why he put what? You ready? So, Jose Ponce, that's a cold pack. Here is another cold pack. And thirdly, a Gyarados. Look at that, Gyarados VMAX. Those Espeons in the background are beautiful. Oh gosh. You wanna see them up close real fast? Here's Toxtricity. And another cold one, I'm sorry. Toss these down here. So, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so this is Dark Espeon from Neo Destiny. See the little Neo Destiny symbol? Yep, Neo Forge, what it's called, I guess, in Japanese. And here's Neo Discovery Espeon. Ooh. Mister, I can't hear your chair. That's right, it broke, actually. And this is a temporary chair, and I have a real fancy chair coming. It's on the way. I bought the expensive Herman Miller one. So we're looking for a Jose Ponce. He says, I have a bag. Oh. He says, now nah, that's overpriced. Jonathan Westfall, John Corbin. Uh, the price is a little high on the packs right now because the demand is very, very high. I could tell you that if I priced them at a lower price, they'd sell out probably in about 15 to 30 minutes. So it's a little higher. Think of it like going to the movie theater and buying some pricey movie theater popcorn, okay? Because you pay a little extra for popcorn at the movie theater. I don't know how to tell you. The demand's just very high right now on this live stream. It's, you can always go to Walmart and buy them, but you can't actually. So this is, it's just a really, you know, it's just whatever people are willing to pay, I suppose. And I think people are willing to open up Cards Live. You ready? Here it is. We've got Jonathan Morris. 10 blue skies, mister. Bag of the overflow for Mr. Jonathan Morris. Oh, mister. Walmart won't sell Pokemon still. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. Blue Sky Stream gonna be sold out first. Can you put a common chancy in Jonathan Morris bag if I pull one? It's super cute. In Jonathan Morris bag. Who's saying that? Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. Gotcha. You want one of the chancy. Oh, what's up, Mary? Where's your lily? So, PSA said that they received the box the uh, other week, and hopefully it grades real fast. Never heard of Walmart, only Mr. Mart. Yeah, this is Mr. Mart. This is Mr. Mart. One. We've got Volcarona. Ooh. Nobody likes literal garbage Pokemon. Garbodor? <gasps> Ooh, what's this gonna be? Is it a trainer? It's the electric energy. Awesome. Ooh. All right, you got the ultra rare 
golden electric energy. Here's Trevenant. Very nice. And the metal energy, I suppose, it comes out of the Towering Perfection set. Okay, we're still looking for a little chancy for him in case he pulls one. Uh, here's a Victini. Is Victini the weenie? Hold. Oh, there we go. Well, that's Blissey. Well, you probably want the Blissey. There's Sideguard. Cold. And cold. All right. Well, didn't we have a whole bunch of this? Give me a second. We should have had a whole bunch of this. He said he wants a chancy. Should be a chancy in here, right? How many cards could there be? Oh, that's another Blissey. Was it Blissey or is there an actual Chansey in this set? There must be a Chansey, because if there's a Blissey, there's a Chansey. Oh, here it is. There you go. All right. And you know what that means? When the English version comes out, there'll be a reverse hollow of that Chansey, and you could actually try to collect that and grade it. That is for Jonathan Morris. All right, Mr. Jonathan. So you did well. You've got... You got the ultra rare out of your, how many packs you order? 10 packs, not bad. Now let's go find his bag. He said he's in the overflow. Jonathan Morris in the overflow. Here it is. I think this is it. Nice hit, son, says Norlex. What? <laughs> Good job, son. <clears throat> Thanks, daddy. Next up, we've got John Gumia. He says, hello, mister, can I get 15 Blue Sky Stream? You sure can. Yeah, we're gonna sell a Blue Sky Stream. <laughs> no! Mom, they're taking all the Blue Sky Stream. All right, we got one. Now, this should be 15, so we take the back pack away. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nobody wants Duraladon. Really? I like Duraladon. Wow. He looks kind of like Tyranitar, but he's like, he's like definitely different, you know what I mean? Snip. Am I the only one who ordered both? I guess everyone's after Rayquaza or something. I know Rayquaza is popular. It's not just Duraladon in that other set though, right? What's, what's the other cards in the other set? All right, Mr. John Gamillo. I'm sure we'll find out. He's a giant bulky metal poo-poo scraper. <laughs> oh, Rayquaza. I think it might be time to... Uh... Here, I'm going to start using these as well. I think it might be time to update that music. This appears to be probably like battle music. There's a Batman Pokemon. Oh, Noivern. Noivern. Yeah, actually, Noivern's not super popular either, is he? Here's a Reggie. Although I saw, I think I saw that alternative artwork on Poke Beach, and it looked pretty good. Oh, who's this? You did it. You pulled the secret rare girl. I don't know her name, guys. Let's go change the music real fast. All right, we reset it. Shauna. Woo! You did it. You pulled Shauna. Let's get to the beginning. There it goes. <laughs> I just wanted to hear the Yoshis go, Nintendo. She saw the waifu. She saw the waifu. And it opened up his eyes. Who remembers that one from the 90s? Whew. I don't even know the name of that song. I just recognized the uh, the melody. Cold. Ligma. I think he means Slugma. Volcarona. Slugma balls, mister. Rayquaza, oh, oh my. I saw the sign, that's right. I saw the sign is, is the name of the song. Man. Ace of Bass, I saw the sign. I don't think it's Ace of Bass. Oh wait, is it? Is he, is he being serious? Maybe it is. Isn't Shauna like 200, it says Estuardo. Is it? I don't know. Did he pull a really hot one? Is this like, Pokemon number one. She looks like a got the tell. I bet she uses got the tell. Okay, who was this for? This was for our good friend, John Gamillo. Mr. John. Now, what's he gonna say about his bag? 
He didn't say anything about, about his bag. Um, let's look around real fast. Are you up top, John? Jack Walsh, probably not up top then. Says, when did this channel become a baby channel? Is Yoshi's story. We've been playing a lot of Mario 64. I figure Yoshi's story makes sense. She uses slap, then I stiffen. What? New Skyla. What are you talking about? She doesn't look anything like Skyla. Mister, I think there's a Flannery in the front. I could be wrong. That is a Flannery. Hey, you got Flannery and you got Shauna. Holy. Next up, we got James Gower, who says another round of, of seven for each towering perfection and blue sky stream. All right, you got it, Mr. James. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe there'll be a secret rare in this box as well. So hopefully you get lucky there. And let's try this towering perfection out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. James ain't scared. $260, she is the Gen 6 female protagonist that trains Fennekin and gets Sylveon. What? I had no idea because I never played Gen 6. All right, here we go. Sneep. I played Pokemon Blue. He's a boomer. Tell him he can't collect cards. <laughs> he only likes Gen 1. What a Gen 1-er. <laughs> All right, toss this over here. You ready? Here it goes. Cold. Here's Reggie. Victini. Cold. Cold. He's a Gen 1 boomer. Cold. And cold. Oh, James, that was really cold. I apologize, man. But how about the towering perfection? Here's Ludicolo. Cold. Oh my gosh, I need to do that, Mary. I'm sorry, Mary. There's Moltres. I'm sorry, there's Zapdos. I only collect Shadowless Charizards. Modern is for Millennials. What? Cold. And. Oh, Mister! Damn, those were cold. I apologize. You got the cold round, Mr. James Gower. Let's get him a pity pull real fast. We'll get him a pity puller too, because that was like really cold. So we only have these pity pull cards because people were kind enough to donate them. We'll get you an Articuno, a Stoutland. We'll get you four cards because we like you, Mr. James. So there's four cards for Mr. James because he had a very rough round. What is this, Jeremy Helmstatter? Oh yeah, he got put over here early. He got put over there early. So James Gower, your bag is right here. Oh, I see, but you took the secret rare out of Towering Perfection. That's why it was cold. All right. Now I don't feel quite as bad. <laughs> That's okay. You'll still get all the V cards. Next up, we've got Kara Nichols. She says, three blue, blue sky streams. Okay, you got it. Three of them. <laughs> do, 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 do. Scooby -dee -boopy -dee -doo. I like this one, the beach music. What's this? <gasps> Landorus? Wow! Cold and Toxtricity. I'm sorry, Kara. Nothing wild coming out of those at all. Here we are, Kara Nichols. Sweet! <laughs> After Kara Nichols, we have Damon Sims, seven, blue sky. All right, you got it, Mr. Damon. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six of them. And I need to run off and grab some more. We are nearly out of blue sky already. I'll be back.
All right. Running all over the place. Don't run out of blue sky. When are you getting more chilling? Oh, I got some more today, cheese. Oh, the price of chilling needs to go down. Give me a second. Chilling rain is going down in price by a dollar. Sorry about that, cheese. I completely forgot. It's because there's so much that happens in the day. All right, cheese. So that should be seven. Jump back here. We were helping Damon Sims. Seven blue sky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Fresh case cheese. It was a case with the guaranteed Galarian Moltres with your name on it. What is he after? I think he's after one of the wafers. Here goes. Trevenant. Oh. He is a scary tree. You know, I actually like the design of Trevenant. I think he looks pretty cool. Let me get some more penny sleeves. We're almost out. All right. He still needs the Zapdos. True. You need the Peonia. Here's Gyarados. Rah! Holy. Salamence, look at that artwork for the Salamence. They're doing a good job on him. I don't always like the way he looks. Maybe what they're doing right here is they're kind of hiding his belly with that rock. Metacam. Okay. Cold. I don't think Mary likes Diglett, Snorlax. Mary only likes, I don't know what Mary likes. <laughs> Mary only likes cloisters. Oh. Feet reveal when? Was he facing the opposite direction? There's no powers where I live. I'm sorry to hear that, Mike Side. All right, so Damon Sims. Let's find Damon Sims' bag. Is he in a new bag? He says, I have a bag. Okay. Damon Sims, the guy who has a bag. Here it is. Oh, no. Cloister VMAX. All right, let's see what's next. Mr. Cheese, three of the Rayquaza ones. You got it, Cheese. Mm. Mr. What's your top five modern sets? Top five modern sets? I mean, I guess it depends on what era you want them from. You know, we can say modern, but a lot of people will consider like XY, e, XY era to also be modern. Cheese, that is three perfectly cold sets. Congratulations, cheese. Woo! Cold ones all around. Now we have Dave Jance, three packs of Blue Sky Stream. I think that's Mr. Snorlax. It's wigged. All right, Dave Jance, three cold ones just before you, so these better be hot, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, Cheese. I'm sorry, Cheese. James Gower had a rough round, too, but he ordered quite a few of those, and he still got a rough round. Full Corona! No searching, Cheese. That's right. <gasps> ah! You did it! You pulled this girl! Woo! I don't know who she is. <laughs> She's doing a little pinky thing, though. Look at the little pinky thing. Who's this? Zinnia? Jormo says, yes! That's for Dave Jantz. Mr. Dave. Give me a second. Ugh. Can't wait for cut pack. Here we are, Dave Jantz. Boop. She's getting ready for you, mister. What, with the little pinky? Is that what that means? I don't think that's what she's doing. Whew. Damn, this Yoshi music hits different. Danny Mark says five packs of Blue Sky, one pack of Final Fantasy Tifa. Fourteen. Danny Marks, have it back. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, all anyone's ordering is Blue Sky. That's why Blue Sky went up to $8. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. 
Not basically not any other pack has been ordered tonight. Just the one pack. Final Fantasy Tifa. And I do not actually have a lot of this stuff. I'm not the actual Pokemon company. Mister, I'm after Lucario's and Ryulu's. That's like my mascot Pokemon. What? All right, let's see. Sleep. And. Come on, I need to see the birds. Sleep. You're going to have a lot of Duraludon boxes to open for TikTok. I know, right? All right, here goes. Danny Marks. You ready, Danny? Cold. Danny, you pull Rayquaza VMAX. He looks like he's got little gummies. Has anyone cared to cut Diggies yet? <gasps> what? Was that two hits out of the same box? Oh, the other card was a Rainbow Rare, wasn't it? So there were two hits in this box. I'm sorry, Cheese. Cheese, you should have ordered like eight packs. You would have gotten both girls in one run. Woo! All right. Here's Ray Ray. It's Ray Ray. All right, so we pulled two of the Shauna's. Now if we could just pull a Tifa. You got Mute, which is a Hero Hollow, Legendary Kusha, Pandemonium, Alana, and Gentiana. All right. Congratulations. She's looking very um, witty or something. How do you describe her facial expression? Shut your mouth, mister. I'm sorry, Cheese. Oh, I don't mean it, Cheese. Let's let's wind Danny Marks. Here you go, Mr. Danny. Congratulations on your Shauna Pearl, Pearl, uh, Pearl poll, which apparently people are telling me is valued around $200, which I find hard to believe because I don't know anything about this character. But maybe she really is worth that much. Holy... Jesse Salinas, one live custom and four Darkness Ablaze. Oh. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm sorry, Jesse Salinas. It's Porygon. Porygon! Shoot. And how about those four Darkness? One, two, three, four. Rate the Ozarks out of 10. Uh, Ozarks? Oh, well, I've only been so many places in the world. I gotta say, it's 10 out of 10. That's why I moved here, you know what I mean? Ozarks is a 10 out of 10. There's probably some other places I'd rate 10 out of 10 as well. But, I mean, the cost of living out here is pretty low. Big, beautiful lake, warm water, 80-degree water. So you just jump right in. It's not that cold at all. You could go to sleep in it if you wanted. Lots of people in the water all the time. Lots of boats passing by. You can own a boat and have it parked right at your home. You, know, you can get in your boat and go to a restaurant on the water. So it's pretty fantastic. And the houses out here, still not, still not that expensive yet. Lots of business opportunity, too. There's, there's a need for a lot of infrastructure to be built out here, or, or I should say development. Uh, there's not a lot of places to shop and not a lot of restaurants. So you could come out here and open up a restaurant, and you'd probably do fine. Suicune, that's a Suicune Reverse Hollow. Oh, also pulling Scissor V. How many people peeing? Millions. Trillions. That's why the water stays warm. <laughs> All right, and Hoopa, it's pretty nice out here. I'm off to bed, have a good one. Have a nice night, Mike Side. All right, look at this Scissor V. How many blue waffles are out there? Tons. Jesse Salinas, here you go, Jesse. Jesse, you didn't order 10 uh, blue skies. That's all that everyone's ordering. It's just blue sky all day. All right, now we have Estuardo. He says two sky streams. You got it. All right. What does the 36 Steam Siege mean? If you open 36 packs of Steam Siege, a whole box, in our Discord server, you will get a special roll called the Steam Siege roll. There's no other roll like it. There's not like a Cosmic Eclipse roll. There's not a... Lost Thunder roll, there's not a Rebel Clash roll, there's only a Steam Siege roll, and you'll only get it for opening 36 packs of Steam Siege. All right, cold! I'm sorry, Estuardo, those were cold. Now we've got Devin Kawamura, he wants 10 Blue Sky Stream, all right. Ow, my pinky. One, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, that should be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. Blue Sky not sold out. Uh, not yet, but the price is a dollar higher on it now. Is that $8 a pack? We're doing that so that I have enough cards to last more than one stream. You know, you know that? You got to buy it out if I don't do that. I know you will. That's what I was saying. That's what Walmart should do. So people are like, oh, man, all these scalpers and all that. Well, Walmart should just raise the price of the cards. We've got, oh, Landorus. If Walmart just raised the price to whatever it was going for online, scalpers couldn't make a dollar anymore. They'd just be, that'd be it for them. Their whole operation would end immediately. What's this? Cold? You got a hollow... Oh, man, you're getting a tough round, mister. What's this? Cold? Keep the hollows. Uh, you mean you want to keep the hollows or you want me to keep the hollows? I'm a little confused. There's Trevenant and... Victini. All right. That was definitely a cold round. Mr. Late Night Stream Chat says stays lit. Dude, it's busy tonight. Busier than yesterday night. Some bonus cards there because we like Mr. Devin Kawamura. And uh, Devin, you got a bag? I think he's got a bag. Christopher, Mr. Devin. Uh, some people don't know much and we'll see anything Pokemon buy regardless. What? Here's Devin Augustine. Dustin Carpio, David Muller, new bag? Let me know if you need a new bag. I keep the hollows, me, what? All right, I'm just getting him a new bag. Woo, new bag, overflow. Okay, let's check the overflow some more. My Coover. We're just gonna get you a new bag, okay? I don't wanna I don't wanna wait too long. New bag! Did you say family? Nothing is more important than family. <laughs> Devin Kawamura. If this is a second bag for you, uh, we will locate both bags and combine them before we ship, okay? Alexander Hewitt. All right, so we've caught up to the Alexander Hewitt order from earlier. Anything after this point, we expect the uh, the price on the blue sky to be $8. So Alexander says open five towers. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Well, it was a big order, man. Five blue sky. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's five blue sky. And 10 team up. 10 team up. Holy. And a custom. Holy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Appreciate you breaking everything down. And here's your live custom. So this is for Alexander Hewitt. Oh, Alexander, you're lucky. I can feel it. So, Alexander, you're getting a whole box of whatever this was. I think this was also uh, Blue Sky. So I opened this earlier in a video, and I just put it in the live custom, the whole thing. There you go. Woo. So, first of all, that's a whole box of Blue Sky there, all the pulls from it. And now let's get these pulls open. I ordered before you said the raise. Anyone after Alexander Hewitt will be expected to do the $8 per pack, okay? If you didn't pay that, you can adjust it or I can refund you. So, I apologize if you came after Alexander Hewitt, but I refreshed after we changed the price and I said, anyone after Alexander Hewitt. Mr. Our Family Kind of Guy or Lone Ranger? Definitely Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger. I had a lot of siblings growing up. And uh, so I already know what it's like to have a lot of kids. Mister, where's my pity pull? Cheese, you need a pity pull. Let me see, give me a second, Cheese. Cheese needs a pity pull, give me a minute, guys. Give me a minute, guys. I'm getting cheese. It's pretty cool. If I can find anything.
All right, Cheese, pretty pull time for Cheese. Cheese had a pretty rough night. He opened three packs and they were all cold. So he needs a pity pull. Here you go, Cheese. Just a little Cheese pity pull here. Woo. There we go. All right, so back to it. This is for Alexander Hewitt. Woo. All right, Mr. Alexander, cold. Here's Articuno, holy, oh my God. Now we were hoping that that would be a Charizard, right? There's Charizard in the, oh, Mr. Pulling the Full Art Snorlax Eevee. Ooh, look at that. Very nice. All right. New member, thanks for joining, mister. Is that Pepe? You know, he's a far right uh, what, what do they say? I can't remember. What was it? A far right symbol or something like that? He's a far right symbol. Far, far right meme. You can't have Pepe. Oh, Snorlax Eevee again. Mister, you got to shave that beard. I'll shave my nasty beard off. Here's a cold one. And Electrode. All right. So you start off very well picking up two Snorlaxes, one of them being the full art. You also picked up a whole box of Skystream out of your live custom booster. So Alexander, you're doing very well so far. I mean, you've been having a lot of luck. Is it just me, guys, or has Alexander had a lot of luck? Definitely higher than average. Here's Galarian Moltres Hollow. Very neat. Hi, Dragon. And, oh, look at this Duraludon V, guys. You tell me you don't like that? I like Duraludon. He's kind of cool. Looks like he's using Zap Cannon or something. Cold. Here's <laughs> this music. What is this? Toxtricity. Cold. Here's, oh, Dragonite. Woohoo! I'm not sure if Mr. Really gave me that card. No, I really did. I, I, you know, you ordered a lot of cards, Cheese, and uh, you've been around for like definitely two years. Why not? I don't even like trainer cards that much, Cheese. You like the waifus? I don't like the waifus. So you get a card you don't like, you can trade me, and I'll, I'll trade you my waifus because I don't need them. I got, a, I got a waifu. So what do we got here? We've got Snorlax Full Art and all your pulls from the live custom booster. Look. Look at all these. Woo. Mr. Alexander, where'd I put your bag? He says, I have a baggie. All right, let's go looking for it. <laughs> what is this music, dude? I'm surprised that your baggie's not here. I feel like that would be the natural conclusion where it should be, but maybe it's over here. Andrew... I do like the uh, Pokemon waifu cards in the in the way that I know they have a certain amount of value. So I can always trade pretty well with them. You know what I mean? So if I pull a waifu card, I go, oh, that's a good card to trade with. All right, here we are. Snorlax. Woohoo! Next up, we have Xavier Larios. He wants five of the Japanese Blue Sky Stream. All right, we got one. And live shipping. You got it. Only three Fast and Furious were good. Okay, there we go. Ow. <laughs> My fingernails. We got one, two, three, four, five. You know what's better than three? Family is. Nothing's more important than family. <laughs> what the? Oh, that sucks. My skin split there on the, the cuticle. What's the word? I don't know how, how that happened. All right. So here goes Mr. Xavier. He's got a cold pack. Oh, Gyarados. Very nice. He says, that feels good. Yeah, it like hurts. It's, like a, it's almost like a paper cut, I guess. It's not like it's serious pain, but it's just like it bothers you all the time. How do I get some Pokemon cards? I've been wanting to get some. You just go, me, 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 me. Cold. Oh. All right. So Xavier Larios also wanted some live shipping. 
We'll go ahead and take your two VMAXs and place them in your bag. Mr. Xavier, you got a nice fat bag, so I think it is time to ship. Let's get the shipping software open. Here we are. And we're gonna choose first class, that's right. We do first class shipping, because it's considerably cheaper. So today I got the um, I got the encapsulation slabs from the Chinese manufacturer, the 20 of them that I ordered, and now I'm sending them off to the Sonic Welding Company for them to do stress testing on, and then after they're done doing that, they're going to configure the machine for specifically those slabs, and I'll have two things to do at that point. I'll have to put in a large order for a large number of slabs. Oh, right, I also have to order them to do, like, my logo on the slab, and then... I will need to order the actual sonic welder and an air compressor and a workbench that can hold a sonic welder that weighs like 150 pounds. So we're getting very close to having a, a sonic welder that can encapsulate slabs and slabs. That's a long way uh, toward our goal of being able to grade cards. After that, I have to come up with the label. So that's the last part, and I'm still kind of coming up with that. So that's the, that's the part I'm still, still kind of struggling with. Today I was doing a bunch of research on how cards get packaged, how booster packs are made, because I thought, how cool would it be if I had a booster pack, a booster packing machine? But man, I can't figure it out. It's it's definitely like industry secrets and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like these companies develop a way to create these fancy ass booster packs, and then they, uh, you know, they don't tell anyone how to copy them, obviously, because why would they do that? So I would love to be able to booster pack cards like this. Like, look how nice this looks. You ever appreciate that? Man, that's a product. It looks fantastic. It's called a form and seal, mister. Well, send me a message on Discord if you actually know the machine and, and everything that allows you to do all this. And uh, I wouldn't mind owning a, a booster pack sealing machine. And I've always got tons of bulk. It would be fun to make like actual custom booster packs that are sealed and everything, you know what I mean? And, sealed up in a box maybe even and ship a box off you could have a, a box of tcc repacks paper packs like mcdonald's i have seen them on ebay very nicely done family owned business says dbz peter so anyways that's something i'm highly curious about is how how do booster packs get packed benjamin garcia wants five blue sky streams you got it mr benjamin one two three four five <laughs> They're making their own vintage packs. Who? What? Sleep. Thank you for all you do. Oh, thank you, mister. You guys come over here and open up packs and, uh, you know, you guys give me a paycheck. So I uh, thank you guys. I'm very lucky to get to open Pokemon cards. What's this? Jumpluff? Holy. Did my order go in? Uh, presumably, it probably did. There's probably a long wait line right now because everyone's ordering the brand new set. And that's that's almost always how it is. When a new set comes out, people just go nuts. Reggie, and who's this? It's a cold pack. That was for Benjamin Garcia. Sorry, Benjamin, no crazy pulls in there. Benjamin Garcia. Let's go looking for your bag. Brian Cole Christopher. Brian Ocho, uh, Christian Styles, Bradley Poland, Brian Wallace. Let's check over here. As in Pr Pratt snipped some cards. What? Hey, that's stealing. You took my good ideas. <laughs> Christopher, Chris, Christova, Brett. You mean he cut a pack in half or he just opened a pack with the scissors? Why do people think that's so crazy to open a pack with the scissors? It's actually very easy. You know what I find difficult? Opening the packs with your hands and not not being rough with the cards, you know what I mean? Alexander, Alex PSX, Casey, Anthony Roberts. Do you need a new bag? You're gonna get a new bag in like two seconds. It's gonna be new bag time for Mr. Benjamin Garcia. Do you ever cut the cards by mistake? Brian, Christopher, Brian, Budgie. Budgie, Cody, Bryant Flores, Claude Cavan, Brandon Russell, Brendan. There's just too many too many names in here. Here's a Brian Garcia, but you're Benjamin Garcia. Brian, Brandon, 
Christopher Bello, Christian Torado. All right, we're doing a thing real fast, guys. So I'm taking all these. These are coming out. I think we'll take Christian Torado out too. Did I tell you guys I created a new holding space on the shelf behind me? It's really nice. It's alphabetically ordered really well. Actually, I might be able to just show you. Let's see. All right. Right there. So I take bags that appear to have been kind of like abandoned a little bit, or they've just been sitting there doing nothing. They're inactive. And I place them behind me. So your little collection, if you ordered cards like three months ago, but you never asked to ship them, your little collection of cards over here is sitting in that box now. Uh, but we're going to create a new bag for Mr. Benjamin. Remember, guys, if you need a new bag, please let me know. Please let me know. All right. I don't know if Benjamin's got a bag over here. He might. Is CGC 9.5 a PSA 9? Uh, you know, maybe it is, but nobody's going to want to... Nobody's going to want to take on the risk of that gamble. That's your risk as the person who owns the CGC 8.5. So when you go to sell it, most buyers are going to want you to sell it as a PSA 8. And that would include me. If I was a buyer, I would not buy that as a PSA 9. Benjamin Garcia. I would buy it as a PSA 8. And I, I know that's tough... All sellers probably want to sell it as a nine. I get that because I sell cards too, um, but all buyers are going to want it as a as an eight, not a nine. Because <laughs> there's no guarantee if they regrade it that it'll become a nine. You know what I mean? Okay, Nathan Sumter. He says ten packs of darkness. Wow, how's darkness so popular? I'm really surprised. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Darkness of blades are really that popular. Must be like a good name, good package good style or something like that you ready i actually think that darkness of blaze is a little pricey i saw the the booster box price on it and i'm like wow it's uh it's a little pricey good zard people like the the charizard v max huh weight line mister there's always a weight line guys and tonight there's an especially long weight line because it's a new set okay so you might have to wait over an hour and that's normal because uh, this happens every time. Every time a new card set comes out, there's a very long line to open it. Did my order get missed? What's up, Jeff Leon? I highly doubt that your order get missed. got missed. There's just a very long line tonight, okay? Come on, guys. Think about it. A brand new set came out. You got people ordering like two boxes of it at a time. It's just going to be a long wait tonight, okay? All right, here we go. Darkness Ablaze. And this guy didn't even order Skystream. He ordered Darkness. Here's Volcarono Mew. All right, Mew's the second best V card in this set. So you got Charizard and Mew V are actually pretty solid. I'm going to go ahead and reset the Yoshi music one more time. There we go. Whew. After this, we'll change music. There's Toxel. Underwater Mario. <laughs> Ariados. Dragazolt. Rose. Oh, you need another hit. Bunnelby and Stunfisk. Ah, oh, man. Freaking Stunfisk is in this set. I know people think this is Amazon. As soon as they put in order, it jumps to the front of the line. Well, I mean, I don't think they think that. They, they're they probably just surprised at how many orders there are tonight. There are an unusual number of orders. That's because it's a brand new set, guys. This happens every time. Uh, but it only happens when a new set comes out. So, like, just two nights ago, there wasn't a new set. And the wait time wasn't that bad. So you probably got a little used to that. But, yeah, new set's always going to be a little crazy. Everyone wants a bagel right now. There's a bagel line. Okay, let's see. So that was for Nathan Sumter. Let's go find his bag. Nathan Longoria, Nathan Curtis, Nick Wieg, Nick Terria, Nick Wilmoth, Nate M. Of course, you guys can help me when you make your order. Let me know if you have a bag, okay? And if you don't, tell me you need a new one. I noticed I don't think people are doing that. Nathan Sumter, he didn't say if he had a bag. I'm just going to create you a new one because you didn't say if you had one. Raging Spirit Gaming, welcome, man. Hey, Raging Spirit Gaming, now you got the little Pokeball next to your name, and that eventually evolves into a Master Ball, and then a Rocket Ball, and then finally a TCC Ball. 
Miss, uh, Miss Toro Teal just finished doing the editing on that, and I'm going to upload it as a badge very soon. And if you guys haven't seen it, it's very cool. Also, my logo's changing. Did you guys know that part? My logo's about to change to my uh, original logo that I had from the Game Economist channel. So the logo will change over. I really, really, really like the Rocket logo a lot. The only problem is it doesn't belong to me. That's that's Nintendo's property, and they're not they're not giving me any trouble or anything like that. And they, I don't know if they ever will, but it's just not mine. So I, I don't I don't feel right having it. Mr. Brian, he says four DAB, one new. He says one new pack. Okay, I think what you're trying to tell me is you want four of these, three, four, and you want one of the new boosters. I'll get you one of the new Blue Sky Stream because that's what everyone else is opening. Here we go. What's up, little louch? Mr. Brian, let's see what you pull. Sneep. Now, you know, Brian, if you want to try for a really nice Charizard, the, Sh the Shining Fates has the shiny Charizard VMAX in it. Also, Champion's Path has uh, two Charizards in it as well. So Darkness of Blaze has a Charizard, but so does Shining Fates and Champion's Path. So there's actually three sets with Charizards. All right, here we are. For me right now, I think the best value Charizard pack is the Shining Fates pack because it gives you a chance for Skyla. It gives you a chance for Lapras and Rillaboom Shiny. And it also gives you a chance for the second most valuable card in that set, which is the Suicune Shiny. Whereas Darkness of Blaze, your best pull is going to be one of the Rainbow Rares, probably. Or, you know, you got like Golden Rillaboom. He's decent, actually. But also the Rainbow Rares in this set. But I don't, I don't think they're quite as valuable, in my opinion. You really want that, Suicune? I do, too, actually. I don't have one yet. Trevenant! So I think Shining Face is the best value Charizard pack. I think that Champion's Path, Path is the worst value Charizard pack right now. However, if you do happen to pull him, he is still valuable. It's just really hard to pull out of that set. And then Darkness of Blaze is definitely in second place. Uh, it's I, I, I think that the problem is the Charizard VMAX from this set has gone down in price so much. You know what I mean? And the box appears to still be pretty pricey. See, I don't ever talk about this kind of stuff. I just list the price that I can sell it at. Here's Brian Bernal. Yeah, Shining Faces. I, I do actually say in the description, top choice, but I don't really explain why, do I? It's kind of like a breakdown of the possible pulls compared to the price of the pack. All right, Mr. Brian. Oh, right, you're, you're correct. Vivid Voltage is also a Charizard set, isn't it? It's got the uh, regular hollow reverse, I'm sorry, reverse hollow Charizard. Yeah, that's a cool set. You get a chance for Fat Pikachu in that one. Isaac Hernandez. Hello, Mr. Four Packs of Blue Sky Stream. I have a bag. You got it. All right, this is for Isaac Hernandez. You ready, Mr. Isaac? Sneep. There we go. All right. I have a bag. You've got Victini is what you have. So Victini, cold. Cold. Hello, this is my first stream. What's up, man? And cold. I'm so sorry, Mr. Isaac, but that was a cold round. Isaac Hernandez. Oh, mister, let's find your bag, huh? Ivanski, ooh, Ivanski. So he says I have a bag. Let's grab the whole GHI box. All right. God, I like this song a lot. Gregory. Oh, you're way back here, I found you. <laughs> Welcome back, Mr. Isaac. I like my pizza boneless. Oh, man. Pizza with bones is the worst. Next up, we got William Balls, 20 Blue Sky Stream, and 10 Jet Black. And one McDonald's. One McDonald's. You're looking for that Pikachu snipe, huh? 10 Jet Black. Okay, give me a second. I like that New York made pizza. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Jet Black. And Blue Sky is 20. Got a new job. I'm trying to treat myself. Nice, man. Congratulations 
on a new job. Working harder than ever. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Nothing feels better than working real hard. Work real hard and be like, heck yeah. You got to get a good feeling from being productive. I feel like you got a lot done. Even if some parts of work gets to be monotonous. Any slabs tonight? Mr. Ricardo, not tonight. I think I'll be a little too busy tonight, Mr. Ricardo. All right, let's count these up. So we'll put these at the back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, there's 20. So that's 20 Blue Sky Stream for Mr. William Valls. How's it going, William? I work at UPS and I'm stealing all your cards. No! Evade, stop! I want to keep them. <laughs> Mom! Mommy is stealing my cards. Tell him he can't do that. <laughs> Don't you get like in crazy trouble if you get caught stealing? How's it how's it work? It's like a federal crime, right? When it comes to stealing mail, that's a federal crime, I'm pretty sure. Sneep. Or is that only for US Post the USPS? Maybe it's just for USPS. Alright, William. Here's Medicam. Unless you live in California, you can steal whatever you want. Oh, man. I heard that, like, in Los Angeles, Target was going to start closing down early every day because the theft, the amount of theft was too high that they couldn't handle it. They're like, uh-uh. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Five-finger discount. There's Landorus. Just stealing some bread to, I got to feed my family. <laughs> It's like an Xbox 360. <laughs> you work for the hub. Just as long as they don't steal any Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards are off limits. That ain't right. Here's Reggie. <laughs> we do that in San Francisco. Federal crime for employees. Cold. Cold. Also cold. Here's Salamence. Ooh. Saw a bunch of tweens stealing gift cards from Target. They don't know you have to activate them at the... Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be so... Oh! Oh! You did it! Oh! All right, I won't shake it. Okay, now we can shake it. Oh, my God! You got the Rainbow Rare Girl. Dude, she looks like she's doing one of those... Uh, Korean pop star dances with the little arms, elbows thing, right? With the little fingers. Walgreens closed 17 locations in San Francisco because of theft. Holy, holy Jesus. Are they ever going to open back up? Is it just like a temporary closing? Think about all the employees that are affected by that. You have employees who are doing productive work and getting paid. And now all of them are out of a job. That's good. Dude. And then they're going to need to steal. They're going to be like, all right, I'm, I got to steal something. Look at this Ray Ray. Rah, he's got little gummies. What's with all the stuff? That sounds like it's gotten really bad. It's weird. You have a limit to steal in California. It's like less than 750, I think, which I think is illegal. Yeah, I think I heard something like that, too. Like, you don't get in as much trouble. I think that's what it is. You don't get in as much trouble. And people just said, oh, okay. A Walmart store has to have over $1 million in shrink to get an actual PTZ camera system. What? All right. Now we're going to open up your one McDonald's pack and pull Pikachu out easy. I heard that these uh, McDonald's cards were doing really well, by the way, in auction. You know, graded 10. I heard they were doing real well. I saw the hango hanger booster packs. What? Once I nearly tackled a shoplifter to the ground. They saw me coming and got scared, so I went to the counter. I nearly tackled a kid out of the Pokemon card aisle to make sure that I got the cards first. I said, you better get out of my way, buddy. I said, those Rebel Clash packs are mine, kid. Heh, I'm not even using 
I'm only using 2% of my power. Sorry, kid. Sleep. 500 McDonald's pack. 500 McDonald's Pikachu in a 10 already. Whew. Holy. Only 500? That's barely any, mister. All right, let's see what we got. <laughs> Weavile. I think what will happen over time with Pokemon card collecting is people will get very used to those large numbers because it's just going to be a fact of life from now on. That's how many are going to be graded. You know how there's like 5,000 Champion Path Charizards or something like that? That's just going to be the future of the hobby. Every time a new Charizard comes out, it's going to be the exact same thing. And so people will get used to those really big numbers and what will actually re what'll be revealed over time, people will realize just how few vintage there is. That's what will happen. People go, oh my gosh, vintage is actually very rare. You know, when something has like a pop count of 200, they'll go, Jesus, there's hardly any of this. Celebi. So that's what I think will happen over time, by the way. And I have been saying that a long time ago. I said, you know, for like Gym Challenge, Gym Heroes, you know, all these old sets with pop counts that are real low, I've been saying, well, I guess I haven't been saying it recently, but I used to say all the time that a pop count of like 200 is nothing compared to the actual population of collectors. But that's why they're so expensive too. And you even have to ask yourself, are they overpriced? Maybe. I don't know. It just depends on if you can find buyers and sellers. You know what I mean? So if, even if a card is rare, that doesn't mean anyone wants to spend like $7,000 on it. So you can't really say it's worth 7000 but then you can have another card that is actually quite populous and everyone wants it and they are happy to pay uh, $200 for it. So it's just kind of how things work, you know? Wow, look at these pools, man. They look fan freaking tastic. Woo. All right, here we go. That's William Valls. And we're doing a box break of, uh, we're doing a gym challenge box break. I got three packs in there myself I'm going to open. I'm very excited for it. I hope I pull Charizard. I hope all you guys pull one, too. I hope there's a Charizard in the box, period. You never know. It might be a box with no Charizard. Imagine somebody pulls the corrected Charizard out. That will be insane. That will be worth so much money. I don't even want to think about it. Steven Dimas says, two packs of Panini Chronicles. I have a bag. Also, you can toss my hollows if I have any. Sounds good, Mr. Steven. Two Panini Chronicles. That's contender. You're the first one to open sports tonight. Here we are. For Steven Demas. All right. Walmart primarily employs floor walkers, so people you may think are customers are just security acting like they're, they are shopping, watching everyone law. I used to do it myself. Oh, very cool. Yeah, we had that at uh, Target. The security people at Target, when I worked at Target, they didn't wear uh, uniforms. They just walked around in regular clothing. So that was always cool. You know, they'd be in the back room, and you'd be like, oh, look, it's the security guys. Steven Demas, you ready? This live is so relaxing. Oh, well, thank you, man. So here's Anthony Davis Jr. I'm sorry, Anthony Davis F. I don't know what that F stands for. Can you open Vivid Voltage? I suppose I could if I wanted. Here's Cameron Johnson. Okay, Cameron Johnson. Luka Doncic. You got Luka Doncic, but it's not a rookie. Darn it. Devontae Graham. He's all the buzz for the Hornets. Wow. Buzz, buzz, buzz. How corny. Jordan Poole. Dude, I love these. These chrome cards back here are so good looking. I think they did well on the design. Jordan Poole. But that is also... Oh, it is a rookie. Yes, a, a good. Okay, so that's a rookie. Here's another Luca, and it's still not a rookie. Sorry, mister. Here is Rui Hachimura. How do I know these guys' names so easily now? I know all their names. Here's Keldon Johnson. Jordan had a great year for GSW. Now my UNC worked there on camera. He told me, who's this? Tyler Harrow. That's a rookie. And here is a purple pink. DeAndre Hunter, rookie. All right. All that's for you, mister. To Mr. Steven Demas, and he says, remove any bulk from my bag. We can do that, Steven. Let's find your bag first. Here we are. Steven Demas. Hero washed, anyone agree? <laughs> He's all washed up. 
All right, you do have some bulk hollow in here. Just a little bit though. So the rest of this is sport. And uh, Steven, since you have so much sports, we could move you over to this. Well, tell you what, there's still room in the S box. We'll keep you in the S box for now. I was gonna say, we can move you over to a sport box. There we go, let's not make it complicated. Thank you, I appreciate the donation of holographic cards, Mr. Steven. Next up, we got Jack Bellow. Mister, it's been a while. Could I get four rounds of King's Court? All right, four rounds of King's Court. This is for Jack Bellow, the prodigal son. He has returned. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Five packs of Blue Sky Stream. You got it. And live shipping. No bag. Oh, no bag, okay. Four rounds of King's Court, five packs of Blue Sky Stream, and live shipping. Why so much? That seems like too much money. Did you overpay, Mr. Jack? Hey, Jack Bellow, did you overpay? I, I don't think your order makes sense. Give me a second. So King's Court, let me go look King Court, King Court up. Yeah, that, that seems like too much. Give me a second. Here it is. Oh, I see. I think you were ordering four rounds of King's Court. I think that makes more sense now. Four rounds. Oh, okay. I, it all makes sense now. There we go. Sorry. So one... <laughs> My mind was thinking four booster packs. That's not right. All right. Read. I always overpay, says Hazy. Mr. Jack. So that's one... Two, three, four. Okay, and that's a total of 20 packs, right? That's what you were wanting. So we're going to count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 packs of Yugi's. And then five of these, right? One, two, three, four, five. With live shipping. You got it. We'll start with the Yugi's. What's the most people you have live on streams? Uh, we, we've had some pretty crazy nights before. This night's pretty high, actually. Yeah, quite a few viewers at 300. Uh, the average, you know, the average used to be 200. And then after I moved here to Lake of the Ozarks, it dipped real hard. It dipped to like 150. And then it's recently it's come back up to 200. And tonight is about 300, which is pretty good. But we have a new we have a new set out, and that might be part of it. But also, we've picked up a lot of new subscribers. Did you guys know that? We moved from 18, I think we were at like 17 or 18,000 subscribers when I arrived here in Lake of the Ozarks. And today, about two months later, we're at about 22.2 thousand. It's like a difference of 5,000 subscribers. So that's pretty good. Sneep. Yeah, the channel's been growing, that's for sure. I'm not surprised. There we go. All right, Mr. Jack. What do we got? Jack Bellow. Ten dangle D-holes. I'll show you a D-hole. Here's Chow Feng, Phantom of Yang Zing. What? Next up, we've got another Chow Feng. Get out of here, Chow Feng. He got chowed down. Arcana Triumph Joker. Arcana Triumph Joker. Cool. <laughs> I've joked about how with the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, because the names can be so long, it's like learning how to read again. C cat <laughs> rose princess first time you say a card name you're like tripping all over it rose princess again how long is the wait says dave charmander there's a little bit of a wait tonight um i i suspect it's over an hour wait time now the pandemic ending do you think a lot of people are going to get out of pokemon well the thing is really before the pandemic was in full swing pokemon cards were already picking up in popularity and there was a bit of an explosion in Pokemon cards because of the success of Hidden Fates. That was before the pandemic. So Pokemon cards were already selling out at your local Walmart and Target because of Hidden Fates. And 
the pandemic probably exasperated it. Did I say that right? Exas exasperated? Exasperate. I, I don't know how to say that word right. Um, but it probably exaggerated it because, ooh, Imperial Bauer, because everyone started getting government money. Holy. And all of a sudden, everyone's an expert in investing. So like Bitcoin exploded around that time too. You saw Bitcoin spiked in price. Same with Ethereum, Dogecoin. It's because all of this money was circulating. I mean, it still is if you think about it. All that money the government printed is still out there. It's in somebody's pocket, but it's still out there. So th there's all this cash now. And so Pokemon cards started flying off the shelves and, you know, everyone started figuring out PSA grading and they're like, oh, I'm going to get myself a PSA graded Charizard. And there's this big movement for everyone to make money grading cards, right? Everyone was grading cards and flipping them. And, oh, look at this burning soul. Very nice. And there's still some of that going on. If you pull a hot card, like... Cheese pulled the Galarian Moltres. He could probably sell that for about 600, which is pretty good. Uh, or he could keep it because it looks fantastic. Magnet induction. So there's still a lot of card flipping going on, but it's died down a little bit because everyone has spent their stim checks. And so now all that money is concentrated up into the hands of the rich, I guess. I think that's what happens. It just gets concentrated up. Here's a Gravekeeper Spy. I've been told those are kind of nice. Gambling comes in lots of forms. Yes, everyone got rich from the stim checks. Well, and it's not just the stim checks, too. Like, there's lots and lots of stimulus that went out just in general. You know, it went out to small businesses. There's the whole... Xiao Feng again! There's the whole child check or whatever, child support thing that's going out. So there's just tons of government money being spent. And that is going to cause the price of the cards to spike for a while. Now, at the same time, after that Hidden Fates Charizard came out and people start locking down and people start getting stim checks... Logan Paul says, why don't I open up two first edition booster boxes of a uh, base set? And that's kind of a big deal because Logan Paul's this big YouTube influencer, right? He's one of the biggest ones on YouTuber. And uh, he starts opening up Pokemon cards for millions to watch. And all of a sudden people are like, oh yeah, Pokemon cards. I want to do that. I want to be like Logan Paul. Uh, and he, he does that twice. But then he also shows off his first edition base set Charizard. Uh, that he uh, was it a Beckett 10. I think it was a Beckett 10 when he did his boxing thing, right? So he's showing it off with the necklace. And there's all these other rappers and influencers kind of jumped in at the same time. And uh, yeah, the price has spiked, especially on Charizards. The price of Charizards for a little while was just outrageously high. And they've really fallen back down to earth, but not all the way back down. That's the interesting part. So the prices are still much higher than they were. So here's a great example. When I started over two years ago, before Hidden Fates came out, before all the hype, before the, sh the lockdowns, I could get a box of Team Rocket first edition uh, vintage for about two to four thousand dollars. Now they go for like about sixteen thousand, maybe in that area, fifteen to sixteen. So the price would then have uh, what is that like doubled or something? Uh, no, not, I'm sorry, not doubled. That would have been like quadrupled almost. So those prices are much higher now and. Uh, I'm still loving it. Uh, all these cards here, just just a while ago, a booster pack of Gym Two would have been like seventy bucks. Now, a booster pack of Gym here, uh, Gym Challenge, maybe like two hundred, three hundred in that range. So I'm loving it. The price change, you know, it's really exciting. There's a lot of people that have gotten back into Pokemon card collecting and sport collecting, and I think people want a way to invest their money too. You know, like you want to invest your money because there's a lot of millennials that are in their thirties now. By the way. So the millennial generation is when all this came out. It all came out in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. And anyone who was like 10 years old back then, they're in their 30s and mid 30s now going, hey, I need to invest some money. And so what people are doing is they're looking at, a, a car, uh, I'm sorry, collectibles as a legitimate form of investing. That's what they're doing right now. And so guys like me are buying up all the Pokemon cards going, I'm just going to hold these for another 20 years. And inflation alone will cause them to go up. You know, what would you rather hold? Pokemon cards or cash in your bank account? You're like, I'd rather have Pokemon cards. You know what I mean? So millennials are 40 now. Well, they're going to be. I'm, I'm 32 myself. So give me eight years and I will be 40. Someone tell Dave he has to purchase them first. What? All right. So all this was for our friend Jack Bellow. So he says no bag. Oh, thank you so much. You saved me a lot of time there. I remember buying sealed base set packs for $35. Yes. I'm a millennial. I'm 37, says Baron uh, McIntosh. Yeah, we're getting older, huh? Damn. Where, where did the time go? 
I thought I was so sexy just the other day, and now I'm like, I'm gonna be 35 in like a in a week. <laughs> Gary helped inflate the prices as well. Law. Well, inflate. I feel like inflate's not a fair word. I feel like it's more like price discovery. You know, him asking him asking a million dollars for a first edition base set Charizard. Is that really so shocking? There's a lot more money out there than you guys realize. There's all kinds of celebrities, all kinds of CEOs, all kinds of investments or investors and, and just really successful people who are being paid a lot of money. Million dollars is tough for young people to imagine having that much, but a million dollars is not actually that much. And when you look at, uh, when you look at the sport cards, a million dollars isn't that much at all. There's lots of sport cards that are worth well over a million dollars. So, you know, Pokemon's sort of like crown jewel card going for a million. It's still kind of small stuff. It's, it's actually not that, it's not that amazing at all. If Pokemon ever went for as much as some of the more expensive sport cards, now that would be worth talking about. So people will say, oh, Gary inflated Pokemon cards. I don't think that's true. I think people actually valued them at that much. And there are millionaires out there who will be happy to buy a first edition base set Charizard for like 200,000, knowing he probably could go to a million. You see what I'm saying? So there's a difference between there's a difference between inflation and price discovery. All right, let's go ahead and print. Boop. Thank you, Jack Bellow. There is a difference between inflation and price discovery. But you know, some inflation probably did occur anyways, just because of all the money printing. All right. After Jack, we have Jeff Leon. He says two Sky Streams and two Eevee Heroes. All right, where's those Eevee Heroes? Perfect. Woo! This is for Jeff Leon. Jeff, you waited a long time for these. Sleep. Didn't the collection Gary had valued like less than half of the asking price? Half of the asking price on Pawn Stars. Yeah, Pawn Stars wanted to pay him very little for the uh, for the Charizards. And Gary was right not to sell to them because now he's selling them for way more money to uh, people like Logan Paul. I heard Justin Bieber wanted one of his cards. And uh, who else is buying it? He sold some of his collection to a friend. He, it, Everyone wants to beat up on Gary for selling his cards for a lot of money. But Gary's the one who would be beat up on if he had been not smart enough to ask for a higher price. He's smart for asking for a higher price. You know how I know he's smart? Because somebody's willing to pay that. So if I've got this dark espion and you got a bunch of people on like Instagram and they're mad because I sold it for $100 and they're like, no, that's only worth 50. But somebody's out here buying it from me for $100. I'd be stupid to listen to those guys on Instagram. You know what I mean? I'd be dumb to sell for $50 if there's somebody willing to buy it for a hundred. And that's kind of how a market is set anyways, guys. You know, that's how uh, paintings are sold. That's how art is sold. It's just whatever people are willing to uh, pay for it. So if Gary is able to sell his Charizard for $200,000 to Logan Paul, he did it. He sold his uh, Charizard for the amount he wanted to sell it at, you know, and he understood that. And anyone who's talking trash on him for making that deal you know, what are you going to do about it? The the buyer wanted to pay that much. He would be dumb to accept a lower amount. You're just telling him he should be dumb. And again, I think it kind of goes back to this sort of concept of you've got like moralistic people who believe, oh, everyone should be poor and sad. And the idea of connecting money values to Pokemon cards should be illegal. Even though the Pokemon card company sells them for a profit all day, that's all the Pokemon card company does. It just doesn't make sense. Jeff Leon, let's get your bag. Gary, uh, he did a very good job selling his cards for what he wanted to sell them at. All right, next up, we've got another Jeff. Forgot to send this for us. Sounds good, Jeff. Now we've got Alexander Hewitt. One spot in the Gym Challenge Custom. All right, you got it. I just want to buy more vintage. Yeah, he did very good selling his card, his Charizards, for the price he was claiming that they were... They were meant to sell it. And when he says things like they'll probably go to a million, he's he's probably right. Because you guys have to understand the people who own the Charizard don't have to sell it. They can be like, I refuse to sell this until it reaches a million. And then that's up to a buyer to be like, ah, oh, man, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take one. You know, that's, that's the whole concept of rare items, rare collectible items. It's just that. 
So I can't believe people get all bent out of shape over that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's how you sell your home too, by the way. When you've got your home and you want to go sell it, you can be like, well, I know I got a nice home and the demand for homes has moved up. So you're going to have to pay me more for my home now. You know what I mean? Gary doesn't own full... Oh. Doesn't own full interest in some of his best card. He sold a 16% stake for 81,000. So if he sold 16%, that means he owns the other 84%. I don't see it. That's clever. If he if he can take that cash he got from the 16% sale and he can reinvest it in the cards that he believe will have price discovery again, making sales like that is actually how, you know, so if you can flip cards in that way, that's how you get your money to grow exponentially. It's, it's the same for any collector or trader. The idea is, you need to be able to sell your product or your, your favorite card and then take that money and buy something that you think is undervalued at the moment and then wait for it to do the same thing that the cards you're currently holding have already done. So what I'm trying to say is he might have sold at 16% stake when the Charizards are already extremely well valued. And he might be using that cash to go buy something that he believes is undervalued. So he still owns 84%. And he's probably making moves in the market with the 16% cash. And I heard that he donated some of that money. I, I mean, it all impresses me. Not, nothing that he's done has not impressed me. All right, here we are. We're logging back in. So we just finished helping Mr. Jeff. Gary still holds those cards. The buyer of the 16% doesn't hold them. Inflation is what happened to Vivid Voltage. Pikachu. All right, we are logged back in. If he dies and his kids want to sell, the guy he doesn't, he sold to, doesn't want to, what happens? Well, they probably split the cards. Uh, you know, he, the guy who, the guy who bought a 16% stake says, all right, well, I'll take 16, I'll take uh, 16 out of 100 of these cards. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll just divide it. It's not actually that complicated. That kind of stuff happens all the time when somebody passes away, by the way. Okay, let's see. Like if you have family members and, you know, your parents pass away, you know, they'll tell you who gets what and you start dividing it up. Next up, we got Alexander Hewitt. He says, oh, wait, we already did that one. All right, after Alexander Hewitt, we have Jack Bello. He says, my first order was short. Here's the difference to make up the live shipping I looked out. No problem. Thank you very much, Jack. Eric Lovato says, three, towering perfection. All right. Mr. Eric, towering perfection. I regret falling asleep. I'm lost now. No! Where are you? We found you. How do you know what cards he gets? So, Mr. Eric, you pull. Oh, it's Duraludon VMAX. Holy. Dude, that's a giant Duraludon. Pack number two. He is literally a skyscraper. Garbodor! <laughs> <laughs> and pack number three is cold. Pretty sure the code for the first edition Charizard are still in database and Pokemon workers print them for money. That's right. <laughs> what? I, you're like the second person who has said that conspiracy. They're printing first edition Charizard. Think about how ruined Pokemon card collectibles would be if that actually was going on and somebody revealed it. It would, you know, it would just destroy the value of a lot of cards really fast. I'm sure Nintendo has no interest in destroying their secondhand market because right now they are enjoying some of probably some of the best card sales of their history as a company is probably occurring right now during the pandemic. And for them to destroy the secondhand market just seems like that would be a terrible idea since it's proven that the secondhand market creates a whole economy of collectors to go back and keep buying their cards. So I'm sure they wouldn't allow it, and I'm sure they don't want it, and I'm sure they would be keeping an eye on that, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not like Coca-Cola is leaking the secret formula on how to make Coca-Cola either, right? They wouldn't let that happen. Or they'd be a really bad company if they did. Raging Spirit Gaming. Hey, you became a member tonight. He says, can I please get three of the EV heroes? You got it. Now, I'm gonna need to stand up and get some EV heroes. We are nearly out. Okay, here we are. So this is still Yoshi, huh? Let's go ahead and play some new music now, guys. Here's 50 minutes of relaxing Yoshi music. <laughs> okay. No Gordies. Gordy, no Gordies. <laughs> That's his name, Gordy. I keep forgetting his name.
Rage Spirit Gaming. No bag, by the way. No problem. Do I invest in other TCGs? Uh, I have a little bit of the Final Fantasy because I thought that was cool. Uh, I have Pokemon Tops cards. That's almost like another t uh, TCG. Uh, but the truth is I'm, I mainly just buy Pokemons. And that's because, you know, I think about which set, I think which series or hobby I think will do best over time. And I'm betting everything on Pokemon. I just think Pokemon's got it. You know what I mean? Like you could do well in other hobbies, but nothing's going to be this big. I think Pokemon's still vastly undervalued too. Here's Marshadow. Cold. Your stomach's not feeling well. Caitlin, no! Ah, uh, Mr. Rage, Spirit Gaming. Just two hollows out of that round. Here we are. But, I mean, pretty. you probably could buy anything you wanted, put it into your closet, and then 20 years later, it's going to cost more. But one of the things you should be asking yourself is 20 years from now, what's going to cost the most? Right, because not all product goes up and becomes uh, as expensive. So, a great example is what goes for more money: first edition base set or Blue Wings base set booster box. And obviously, it's the first edition base set. So, if you had just put all your money into the, because originally the first edition base set booster box would have only cost a hundred dollars. Every box comes out at a hundred dollars a box, but they don't all end at you know a hundred thousand dollars a box. Only some of them do. So that's something to think about. Over time, some of them end up becoming more valuable than others. Oop, it should be Raging Spirit. Is that right? Yes, Spirit Gaming. They all start at $100 a box or whatever, and then, uh, you know, or whatever the retail price is, and then 20 years later, they all cost uh, considerably different amounts from each other, which means some boxes were not printed as much, or they're more desirable, or they were open faster, you know what I mean? Are your evolutions smacking chilled still? Smacking chilled? No, they're hot, hot, hot. Dion Gonzalez, thanks for becoming a member. Next up, we got Devin Kawamura, who says, one box of Shiny Star V. Cheese said next box, right? Oh my God. All right, give me a second. I'm standing up and grabbing some. Cannot believe we're opening this much Shiny Star. I'm actually really impressed. Wow, I really like this Yoshi music that's playing right now. I don't know what that sound effect they're using is, but it's cool. Here it is. Yeah, that was good Yoshi music. I'm gonna have to replay that one. I guess I didn't cause a tear. There we go. So Mr. Devin is going deep. I appreciate it, Devin. Devin, you are definitely a big card opener. I really, really, really appreciate it. Let's see what pulls you get. A kilo of Evo. I'll get one kilo. All right. How much is that Erica's Venusaur worth? Uh, we could look it up if you wanted. Actually, look at this. Look how off-center it is. You see that corner? Now compare it to that corner. Very off-center. They gave that a 10. It's something to think about. You know, CGC, that'd be a 9. Somebody out there will accept it as a PSA 10. They'll be like, I don't care. They'll be like, PSA 10 is PSA 10. And that's how they are. They'll just be like, I don't care. PSA's word, PSA's grade is the word of God. You know, that's how they'll treat it. PSA law. Yep, that's exactly what I said. See it all the time, actually. And CGC is much tougher. But the, the irony is I can sell this as a 10 because PSA said it was a 10, you know? So it doesn't seem right, you know? It, it doesn't seem right. Not right to me. Here goes, oh, Grookey. And Reshiram, ooh. Snorlax says, what the? <laughs> Pretty wild, right? But then some PSA 10s are actually very close to a good looking 10, right? So it's very confusing. Here's Charizard. Here's Indudu. All right, well, at least this pack had a Charizard code card, right? <laughs> Okay, there's Ndudu. And you got full art here. Urshifu with what? Oh, man, look at this. Senescort shiny. That looks great. <gasps> oh! Double pull, man. Holy. There it is. It was the next box. Congratulations, Devin Kawamura. There we go. <laughs> 
So that makes this a very good box, Mr. Devin. All right, here's your Santa Scorch. Very nice. Santa Scorch looks great too, to be honest. I really like him. So, and here's some hollows. We'll add that to the next pack. Woo! Great job, man. People were going so deep for that Charizard, and he really was in the next box. You want to see it again? Let's take another look. So you can get both Charizard VMAX and Charizard V from Shiny Star. And it just looks so clean. The Japanese one definitely looks distinct from the English one. All right, let's see what's next. Hey, you might have the Suicune in here too. You never know. So let's let's keep going. There's the Dene. He's a good pull. Mike Side should clip all the hot pulls tonight. <laughs> Mike Side have been working hard, man. Mister, that Gengar Hollow is looking very nice. There's Kubfu and Eldegoss. Did someone say that the Charizard is off center? Apparently, that doesn't doesn't matter to PSA. Also, I I can't tell if it's off center. I I haven't looked it over. Um, but you just saw that Venusaur. That Venusaur came back 10, and he's crazy off-center, so I don't know, man. <laughs> I have a Delta Species Charizard card. Nice, man. Put that there. Only Charizard matters. Mewtwo shiny because he talks. Because Mewtwo talks. Left bigger than right. You talking about testicles? Here's, oh, Calyrex and Phalanx. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take these hollows and toss them in with this one. There we go. Mister, I just made a morning deuce. All right, next pack. Up, oh, Urshifu. And here's Eveltal. Look at this Eveltal. Okay, very nice, Eveltal. Boop. Galarian Zapdos. And Senti Scorch. Look at this Senti Scorch. I Man, I don't think it matters what's, what's in the rest of these packs. You already got the Charizard. What else is there? Intalion and... Oh, man, for a moment, I thought you had the Suicune, but this is actually still really good. That's the uh, Intalion, right? So he doesn't come out too often either. This was a great booster box of Shiny Star. You did really well, in my opinion. Luck is on your side. You got to take it when you get it because... You can't be lucky every time. So let's go over his box. Look, so he's got the Inteleon. He got the Charizard code card, right? So that's a that's a bonus. The Senna Scorch. Hold on. Let's go through the whole thing. Okay, so he didn't get a lot of full art. And that's because, in my opinion, is because he got these two amazing rares. So I think amazing rares replace full arts. You always get three shiny hollows per box. He got Senna Scorch, Inteleon, and Dedenne. I think that's actually pretty decent. Now, not every box has a Charizard code card. He's one out of 24, and with there only being 10 packs per box, he would show up every almost three boxes, I'd say. So he got the Charizard code, and then also the Charizard full art. Yeah, it's great, great box, actually. Really nice. All right. Devin. Devin, now you're going to be like, ship those cards. <laughs> Whoop. Glad to see some good hits finally coming out. I felt like Shiny Star was a little cold yesterday night. We were opening tons of Shiny Star yesterday. Eric Lovato says two live custom bloosters. What's up, Eric? Do -do 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 -do. You got Rookity. Look at that Rookity. And Do -do 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 -do. Cursola. Those are a bit cold. Sorry, man. So those are those live customs. I'll toss you this shiny Calyrex. Not shiny. Shadow Rider Calyrex. Just for fun. All right, there you go. Now we've got Gabriel Rosa, who says Battle Styles and Eevee Heroes. All right, sounds good. I have a bag. Battle Styles. Oh, we are so close to being out of Battle Styles. But there's more on the way. Sneep. Sneep. All right. All sneaped up. Oops. He got white leggings. Who got white leggings? That's cold. And cold. Woohoo! I apologize, mister. Mr. Gabriel Rosa. Those are two cold packs. Now we got Rodolfo Gonzalez. Oh, two Rodolfos now. Rodolfo Zerate and Rodolfo Gonzalez. Gonna have to be real careful. So he wants 10 of the Sky Stream and 10 of the Towering Perfection. I have a bag. I go by Dion Gonzalez on YouTube. Sounds good, mister. 
So 10 and 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And let's grab these guys as well. Have you ever played the Pokemon TCG Go? Have I played it? Uh, I almost played it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so we got 8 there. Towering Perfection. Definitely a little slower than the other one. I quit this good night. <laughs> Have a nice night, Mr. Riku. I still watch your stream, The Card Economist. I'm supporting you. Oh, thanks, Caitlin. I appreciate it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we got too many. This one goes back. There we go. This is for our friend Rodolfo Gonzalez. Ooh. Rodolfo, are you new? I think he's new. You ready? Sleep. Sleep tight, sweet prince. <laughs> oh my god. Sleep. Sleep. And sleep. Put this back over here. Mr. Rodolfo. Scissors got me paranoid. Snip! <laughs> cut all the cards in half. So scary how you cut them. Uh, I've been doing it a long, long, long time. We go live every night for four hours a night. About three to four hours. And I've been doing this for two years. And I don't even take weekends off. We even go live on the weekends. That's all seven days of the week. And uh, I've never... Uh, I snipped the cards a long, long time ago. It was an energy card that was sticking up. And the top of that energy card got touched by the scissors. And that's about it. It's actually very easy not to snip the cards. You know why? Because with your thumb, you can actually feel where all the cards are. And uh, I do a little bit to make sure all the cards are in place before we start. Lycanroc, when do I sleep? Uh, just whenever. Usually in the daytime these days. Why Kyurem? See, my wife misses me. I try to I try to spend as much time as I can with her, and lately I just been working on the cards so much. The last two days, uh, I just don't get to see her enough. Look at this Gyarados. You're going to your friend's house. I bought XY Evolution Pack. I just got my shipment in the reverse holographic charge I pulled in the last ten minutes of your live stream. It's not in my bag. So it's Dave Charmander. All right, Mr. Dave Charmander, go ahead and contact me on Discord about that. You mentioned before that you were missing your Sabrina's Gengar too, huh? So you better contact me on Discord about that. All right, let's see. Here's Gyarados. Place this over here. Cold. Landorus. Cold. Here's Reggie. And Salamence. And a cold pack. Woohoo! That's for Rodolfo Gonzalez. Mr. Rodolfo, let me put this in a bag for you. There are just like three, four different Gyarados poses in this set. How long is the wait? Uh, it's gotten a lot shorter, okay? The wait, the wait time's gotten a lot shorter. I've gotten the stream up by quite a bit. Here we are. Let me go ahead and put this in a bag. Woohoo! Where is the Gyarados alt art? Rodolfo. Um, contact me on Discord, Mr. Dave. Rodolfo Gonzalez. There we go. Next up, we got Alex PSX, who says, cut one NBA hoops. You got it, Alex. One NBA hoops. And I believe we've got one for you right here. So Alex likes to cut the sport cards. And you got what? Jalen Smith, Malachi Flynn, and Daniel Oturo. 
up. You got a number, Jalen Smith. Look at this, Alex. You got a number, Jalen Smith. So the number shows up on the front of the card, huh? Alex, don't cut it. Sell it to Eddie or something. Don't listen to Philippe. Look, I'll cut the other ones, Alex. Alex says, how much? I don't know. Don't, don't cut it. How much to not sacrifice? <laughs> well, here, I'll sacrifice the other ones. Whoop. Alex, you should try to make a trade with somebody who actually collects sport cards. You've done well. Yeah, it's like a million dollar card, Alex. What do you think of, man? Oops. Toss these down here. There we go. Can I hear your best, Silver Lance? Well, only if somebody was opening Silver Lance. 44 out of 75. Jalen Smith. Mister, how much you want? So you're offering it to me. Uh, the problem is I don't collect sports. I tell you what, man. Let's do a little research, Alex. Let's find out if he's actually valuable. I'm curious. All right. It's all about researching, right? Jalen Smith. And he's from what? Hoops. And 2021. Rookie. And then we do slash 75. Is that right? Oh, so he's worth about 30 bucks. He's worth a little bit. What do you want to do with them, Alex? All chat can dunk on him. Mod, stop him. He's worth about 30 bucks. It's still a decent pull. He says cut. You got it. I'm going to save the penny sleeve. Wouldn't want to waste that. All right. Sorry. Jalen Smith. Now there are only 34 of these in the world because because Alex destroyed one of them. Oh, no! There's only th 74 of them. <laughs> Maybe you should have thought about that before becoming a basketball player, Jalen. <laughs> Wow, why does um Alex keep pulling these cool cards out of the uh, hoops? Alex, you could have just you could have just opened hoops and kept it. You know what you'd have by now, Alex? You'd have two lamello balls. Hold on, let me get these real fast. So, Alex, you'd have two lamello balls. You'd have a jersey card, and you'd have a number Jalen Smith. Alex, you're missing out on like what is this like over a hundred dollars of pulls that you've just sliced? I don't know why you do it, Alex. <laughs> Too much for me, man. All right, next up, we got Austin Warren. Austin Warren says, three towering. I requested shipping a few days ago, so I might need a new bag. Well, if I haven't messaged you yet, it means it hasn't gone out yet, okay? So, Mr. Austin, here are your three packs of towering perfection. Call NBA, they're crying. Sneep. All right. Mr. Austin, cold. Cold and High Dragon. Toss that away. That's for Austin Warren. So, Mr. Austin, let's go find your bag. All right, that's... Not it. Let's come over here. Anthony Roberts. Here we go. Anthony Warren. You could have given them to Anthony Warren. Or not Anthony. Austin Warren. You could have given all those cars to Austin. Poor Austin. I'm sorry, Austin. All right. Next up, we got Andraz. Mr. $28 is for Espeon Submission CGC Tier 1. Rest is for 5 Blue Sky Stream. Sounds good, Mr. Andraz. All right. Let's see. Let me just do the math in my head real fast. Let me, let me make sure this adds up. So 
So, Mr. Andraz, you're about $5 short on that one, okay? Mr. Andraz, I'm going to go ahead and refund this, and you'll want to get back in line, okay? So remember, for the uh, Sky, Sky Blue Stream, it's $8 a pack right now, and that is because when we had it at $7 a pack, we were selling out of it too fast. All right, so Mr. Andraz, your order's been refunded completely, and you can retry on that. Now we're going to try Jeff Leon who says one live custom booster. You got it, Jeff. Do, 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 do. Ice Q. Oh, Jeff Leon, what a lovely Ice Q. Sorry, Jeff. Jeff Leon. Now we have Rudolph. He says live shipping. Thanks, mister. No problem, Rudolph. Description says seven. Uh, Mr. Andraz, hit the refresh button. Hit refresh, Mr. Andraz. I apologize. It's probably a misunderstanding. Yeah, so if, if an update is made to the... Oh, these are both Rudolph Gonzalez. Hmm, what's going on here? Hmm, so here's a Rudolph Zerate. I think this is supposed to say Rudolph Zerate. I think we wrote Rudolph Gonzalez on the bottom. I'm sorry, man. He says, I have two bags. TCC is OP. Give me a second. I just got to do a review of something to make sure we don't mess this up. We're scrolling to the beginning of the live stream. These names, these Rudolph names, man. Let's see. Oh, man, it's been a busy night. Here it is. Rudolph Gabriel Zerate. Two boxes of Blue Sky Stream. So I wrote Gonzalez down. This should have said Zerate. I don't know why I wrote down Gonzalez. Probably because we have a Rudolph Gonzalez. So we're going to write down Zerate. And we're going to go ahead and place the Rudolph Zerate card in here as well. Woohoo! Mister, it's going late. Should I cut a box soon? Oh, my God. A box. Go ahead and put these in the front real fast. If Milwaukee wins, I'm done with basketball. Milwaukee can't... What? <laughs> if Milwaukee wins, I'm quitting basketball. How long do you think it will take you to get back to me on the scored? Uh, it will not take that long, but it will happen after the live stream. It will happen after the live stream. I'll probably end the live stream and then immediately answer you. All right. So, Rudolph, Gabriel is a rake. Give me a second. So we're jumping back up here, back up to the top. Here it is. And he would like live shipping. No problem, Mr. Rudolph. Let me get you your live shipping now. And let me make sure you get your tracking and print. And we'll put this over here. And you're ready to be live shipped. Very good. Your label's all ready to go. Now we have Richard Vasquez. He says, one towering perfection and one blue sky stream. I'm back. You got it. All right, you got it. Snip. Mister, are you gonna get a blender? Um, I have not ordered a blender. It's something I'm debating. Rayquaza. We've thought about offering people the ability to blend their cards. And a cold one. There you go, Mr. Richard Vasquez. Richard, let's go find your bag, Richard. Here it is, Richard Vasquez. Mister, I want to blend a PSA slab. You got it. <laughs> hey, I'm all about that, Rayquaza. Yeah, he looks great. Jack Bellow says, adjust for Blue Sky Stream. Oh, thank you, Jack. Whew, that was very nice of you. Danny Marks. 
Thanks for the amazing pulls. Want to do live shipping, but I also was wondering if you could look at my trainer that I pulled, and do you think I should send it off to be graded? If so, how much does it cost for you to do that? Uh, if you scroll to the very bottom of the description, I can I, I list some prices for me to do all the work of sending your cards off for you to grade to CGC. So you can hire me to do that if you want. Okay, he confirms his address. Will you let... We'll let you know on whether or not to be graded when you're reading this message. If I fall asleep and have no reply, I guess just send it off to be shipped. <laughs> okay, <laughs> if I fall asleep. So here's Danny Marks. He wants to know whether or not his card should grade. If it's a $200 card, it definitely should. And uh, it looks fine. Yeah, these Japanese cards are always cut really well. So you could... His name is Mr. Mr. What? Danny Mark says hi. Yeah, Danny, if you want to send this off, I would do CGC Tier 1 No Subgrades and see what happens. Maybe it'll come back pristine. You never know. Uh, if it comes back 9.5, you can try to sell it as a 9.5 gem mint, or you could try to regrade it if you prefer to regrade it. He says, yes, send it. Says Dion Gonzalez. Since I'm here every day, I entertain. So, thank you, Alex. You have blessed me with that cut. What? Yeah, Danny, it sounds like you still need to make up your mind, so let me know, Mr. Danny, I'll just write down that you um, you have $6 with me, okay? And you can use those for live shipping if you prefer. So Danny Marks, you have $6 of store credit. There we go. Next up, we've got... Francis Santos, two NBA Prism, and one Japanese team-up. Plus, I have a bag. You got it. Here's the team-up. And two Prism. There we go. <laughs> I have to go find them. Ha-ha! So this is for Francis Santos. How's it going, Francis? Mr. Francis. Sneep. I will never cut pokies, says Alex. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you ready, Francis? First pack, cold. How about the Panini Prism? These won't be cold. Should I smoke? My stomach hurts. What? <laughs> you should not smoke, mister. It's bad for you. Everyone knows that. LeBron James. Hey, that's a cool artwork. I like that. Damn, that's cool. You also have... I've been up for 36 hours. Nice. Here's Jordan Clarkson. Kevin Porter. And Bradley Beal. Ooh. I think that's a special Chrome card back there. Here's also Alex Caruso. Okay, just a regular Alex Caruso. Stephen Curry. Isaiah Stewart, rookie. Ooh. And Malachi Flynn, rookie. All right. Very cool. All of that is for Francis Santos. Thank you so much, Francis. So let's go find your bag. Dustin. In this very full D-box. Donovan Peacock. Who's that guy? There's a Francis Serrano. Dontrell, Daniel, Dustin, Damien, hmm, let's check up top, wait, they say, he says I have a bag, okay, so we're looking for a Francis Santos bag, Finnegan, Dan Newman, Diego, Darwin, Daniel Schmidt, okay, we're gonna check over here now. Serrano, Dontrell, Daniel, Dustin, Damian, Dave, Daniel, Dylan, Daniel, Dennis, Francisco Mendez, DiGiovanni, Devin, Francis Santos. We got you. So many bags. <laughs> there's just a lot. That's all there is to it. All right, and these are going to be added to that sport box over there. Mr. Francis, welcome back, man. Sweet. 
Now we've got Team Rocket Grunt. Team Rocket Grunt says, I'm feeling lucky, Mr. Let me get a towering blue sky, chilly willy, battle style, shiny face, and an extra wigged life pack. You got it. So one of each, huh? So here's towering. Here's blue sky. Here's uh, chilly willy. Battle styles. Shining fates. And an extra wigged life pack. <laughs> All right. Woo. He's got the... He's got the, uh, what do they call that? The, um, the demo platter. What do we got? Oh, you are extra lucky tonight. Do -do -do -do. Can I open it? Do -do 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 -do. So that is a whole box of Towering Perfection, right? Yeah, this is the Towering Perfection I opened in the video. And those are all the pulls from Towering Perfection. Very nice. So you got all the pulls over there. The sample platter. There we go. Woohoo! Yeah, that's a whole box of Towering Perfection. Snip. And snip. All right. What do we got from the Shining Face? Rusted Shield. Venipede. And Battle Styles Bronzong. Cold and Lichen Rock, you did it! <laughs> Five packs, one Lichen Rock. Woo! I'm telling you, spreading thin across multiple sets is always very risky. However, he was lucky. He got the hot pull on the live custom boosters, so you you do actually get your money's worth out, which is the funny thing. Yeah, this one pack of live custom saved you. Look at that sweet V, man. Awesome. And you got the schoolgirl. Very good. That's for Team Rocket Grunt. Here we are. Very nice. Who's next? Looks like we're refreshing. We're all caught up. Not that bad of a line at all right now. How far are we? 140 minutes in? Excellent. See, the La China should have been cut. What? What are you talking about, LaChina? So, after Team Rocket Grunt. Doo -doo -doo. All right, give me a second. One moment. All right, that's fixed. Now we have Eric Lovato. He says, one live custom booster. Oh, Eric, it's an interesting night for you because you're going to pull this pack of tag team. Look at this, tag team. Tag team is an exclusive Japanese set from the Sun and Moon era. This is the set that gives you a chance for golden full arts. Ooh, snip. Good luck, Eric Lovato. These packs are valued over 20 bucks. I think they're quite a bit more than that. Let's see, what do you got? You got Mewtwo Hollow, Kartana, Buzzwool. Ah, darn, it's a Buzzwool pack. Oh, well, I like the Mewtwo Hollow, though. Very cool. <laughs> All right, that's for Eric Lovato. Woohoo! Now we have Alexander Hewitt. Ten more team up and one custom booster. Oh man, one custom booster, Alexander. I think you missed all the hot ones. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yep, that's gonna be a cold one. That's why I thought. <laughs> so he also wants ten more team up though. Let's see what's in the team ups. Mr. Alexander, do we have ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need one more pack. All right, give me a minute. Oh, wait, here's one more pack right here. I almost missed it. <laughs> I almost threw that away. <laughs> All right, we got 10. How much for the All-Star packs? I don't have any for sale. I just happen to have that one loose pack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We could get them on this channel again, though. They'd just be kind of pricey. Sneep. And sneep. And finally... 
<laughs> Alexander Hewitt. Get some Gen 1s. Here's Moltres. Have you ever accidentally cut cards that way? Never. I would never. Cold. Salabi Venazor. Ooh. All right. Love the cards in Tag Team. You got Blastoise Hollow, Charizard Hollow, and Venazor Celebi. How cool is that? Here's, speaking of which, here's a Blastoise. <laughs> All right, what's next? Cold. Can we get a Charizard Hollow? That'd be nice. Nah, we got Bill. God damn it, Bill. <laughs> Bill's just doing homework. Not exactly an exciting card at all. And, oh, there we go. Charizard Hollow. Damn, dude. You are not wrong to go after these Charizard Hollows because they are just popping out so fast. See, I don't, think, I don't think a lot of people in the card community know how easy it is to grab these excellent Charizards from the tag team box. And we're opening them ourselves. The team up. Did I say tag team? I meant team up. All right. Mr. Alexander, where we put your bag last? Where's your bag? Oh, here it is. Ooh. Alex says, cut, TCC. <laughs> What's up, Antonio? <laughs> Eric Lovato says, one more live custom booster. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Eric, one large for Eric Lovato. Oh, Eric. Oh my. What do we got over here? You're going over here into the gym challenge large. So that means there's one, two, three, four. Four spots left. Jonathan Morris says six towering perfection and I threw in 10 for shipping of my bag in the overflow. All right, let's see. Bag and NFL break, and I think two slaps. Thanks, Mr. No Rush on the shipping. Well, I appreciate it, man. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll get you live shipped. Towering perfection. Ooh. For Mr. Jonathan. You got a bag in the overflow. Woo. We've got Garbador. All right, there's Garbador. Cold. Cold. Here's Slacking. Cold. And, oh, man, that's kind of a tough round. All right, nothing too wild coming out of there other than the Garbador VMAX. And let's find your bag. Here's Jonathan Morris. Ooh. There we go. I bought three boxes. What? All right. John Jonathan needs a label, and he says he has two slabs. Ooh, very heavy. Here it is, Jonathan Morris, with an address that begins with 4-6, and we'll bring this up to 15 ounces. That is the limit print. Okay, we're gonna say plus slabs. How big is the line? Uh, not that not that large anymore. The line has cooled down a lot since we started. Not too crazy. There we go. Next up, we got Mr. Zachary Weichinger. He says, using my dollar store credit to buy a towering per perfection may be a new bag if you ship mine out. My bag was in the overflow. Sounds good, Zachary. Here it is. Zachary, sneep. And you pulled a cold one. Woo!
Okay. So you say your bag is in the overflow. Oh, but it doesn't matter because your pack was cold. Next up, we've got, sorry, I'm thinking about other things. Cheese says, cut a shining. So Mr. Cheese would like to cut a pack of shining fates. All right, cheese. Here it is. Good luck. Let's see what he cuts, guys. He cuts a hollow. Oh, cheese. Not the hollows. Think of the children, cheese. <laughs> Sorry, cheese. No Charizard in that pack for you to cut. I know that's what you're after. Cheese is trying to get that Charizard to show up in a cut. Matthew Mangiello says, one live custom, one each of Blue Sky Towering Perfection. I have a bag. Sounds good. So here's your live custom booster. Do, 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 do. Oh, you got a lovely Raichu GX. However, that's considered a cold pack. And let's go grab you a Towering Perfection and a Rayquaza. Ooh, someone tells me cheese likes cereal. Sneep. Can these break apart already? There it goes. <laughs> that foil really sticks. Mr. Matthew, what do you got? Cold pack and, oh, what's this? Oh, what'd you get? <laughs> oh, Hyper Rare Trevenant. Congratulations, that's a huge snipe. Wow, he got that in one pack, everyone. Fantastic. Well, that's a Hyper Rare. Makes me wonder if there's another one in the box, a secret rare in the box. So, Mr. Matthew, let's find your bag. Matthew Mangiello, where would we have placed you? I think you're in the overflow, if I recall. He got that on one pack. Here it is. Very lucky. Yay, me! <laughs> All right. Devin says, ship that Charizard to CGC Tier 1 plus subgrades. Also, five Chilling Rain, five Eevee Heroes, five Jet Black, five Matchless Fighters, two Shining Star, two Shining Fate, one Shining Star, one Unified Minds. You can keep the hollows. Thanks, man. So let's go grab your bag. That's a pretty big order. Here's Devin Kawamura. He's got a complicated order, but the very first thing he wants is grading on his Charizard. Look at that Charizard. Okay. And we'll need a card grader. There we go. We'll write your name down here. Damn, that's really lucky, man. See, if you could pull cards like this every time, you'd, you'd just get rich opening cards. You know what I mean? But you can't. That's the reason why, you know, you break even because you'll also pull all the cold ones. So here's the chilling rain. You'd be lucky if you break even sometimes. Sometimes you go negative if you get really unlucky. But if you open in huge quantities, in my opinion, you eventually break even. So five Chilling Rain, five Eevee Heroes. Ooh, five Eevee Heroes, you say. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's five Eevee Heroes, five Jet Black Star. Oh, here it is, Jet Black Spirit, I think you meant. <laughs> Jet Black Spirit. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five of those. Five matchless fighters. Yeah, matchless fighters, in my opinion, is still a hot set. One, two, three, four, five. Two shiny fates. All right, you're 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 in luck. Cheese cleared a cold one for you. <laughs> one shiny star V. And one, ooh, wounded minds. All right, let's get that unified. Where are they being kept? Here they are. And one unified minds. All right. Ooh, woo. All right. This was my first purchase, and I am excited. Your hypers? Oh, mister. Now, hopefully you read all the uh, instructions in Discord or you watched the instructional video on how shipping works, okay? If you haven't done that, be sure to watch the video afterwards.
All right. So we'll start with your Japanese packs first. Mr. Devin Kawamura. Time to get three hyper rares, right? We're going to snipe each set. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Pack number one is cold. Pack number two is Mershadow. The video was very clear and nice. Ooh. Here's Flora Jazz. And so no luck in the Eevee heroes, but maybe the matchless fighters. Cold. Here's a cold one. Oh, man. <laughs> Thunderous. Cold. Can we get anything? That is also cold. Okay, so don't worry, though. Jet Black Spirit's about to be super hot, right? Here's Metagross. Gross, gross, gross. How have the Blue Sky stream packs been? Nobody's pulled the alternative art. Rayquaza yet. Probably still in there somewhere. Right from a case. Probably in there somewhere. Here's Calyrex. All right, Calyrex. And all right. So just as usual... Taking a few a few packs from multiple sets is always very risky, and I think that that was a risky round that ended with just a VMAX and a V being pulled. Okay, place those over there. But maybe we'll get some hot ones over here. Let's see what happens over here. Let's see what happens. Sneep. That's not a cherry zard. I know. Sneep. Here's Ooh Unified Minds, Shiny Star. What is the timeline of the upcoming Star Wars packs? Uh, they're arriving within a week. <laughs> and I think you guys will like them a lot. They're pretty popular. They'll be a regular part of the live stream now. Here we go, Shiny Fates. Flapple out of Shiny Fates, very nice. All right. Shiny Fates pack number two. Dragapult. Wow, that was actually really nice. Dragapult and Flapple. Oh, I like this song. Another shiny star. Blastoise. And just a Blastoise because that's going to be Ditto VMAX. You want to see the alternative art Dragonite? Yeah, he's pretty cute. Unified Minds. Unified Minds has a Dragonite in it, by the way, if you didn't know that. Chilling Rain. Oh, here we go. Oh, you do get a hit. Take a look at that. That is Ultra rare water energy. Very fancy. Here's Diglett. Wait, he does have... Does he have old school Yu-Gi-Oh? I do not. I do not. It's too expensive and I don't have enough Yu-Gi-Oh people. Here's Sir Fetched. Maybe if I knew they would sell, I'd get them. And Flannery. Ooh. But we're getting some old school Star Wars. All right, Mr. Devin Kawamura. Nothing too crazy came out of here. I like your Flapple and Dragapult, and you also get this lovely magic, I'm sorry, water secret rare, ultra rare. And you said donate the hollows. Okay, and we got your Charizard off to grade. Whoop. All right, with subgrades. Andraz, he says, just submit my SBL to CGC. Here one, please. I'm going to beach. He's going to beach, guys. Now, Andraz, I don't know if I've seen your bag in a little while. You're in an overflow. Let me see where your bag is. All right, not in there. Cheese Alex. Andraz, haha, he is up top. His Espeon. Must be this Espeon. <laughs> All right. So, CGC Tier 1 for Mr. Andraz. There we go. Ooh. Good choice. Did that music end? I think that music ended. I thought that music was pretty good. We might have to play that one again. Video pause, continue watching. Fifty minutes of relaxing Yoshi music. That's what we were listening to. 
And now we're refreshing. Woohoo! Eevee Heroes comes in boxes of 30, right? That's correct. Boxes of 30. If you had grade one of my cards to CGC, how long will it be before you get it back? That's up to how long it takes CGC to do the grading. I'll take that under advisement, haha. -ha. All right, let's see. Now we have Mr. Christian Styles who says three Eevees, I have a bag. You got it. One, two, three. Christian. Cold. Do they tell you what their estimated turnaround time is? I think it's about a half half year or something like that. Maybe a little less than a half year. I haven't looked in a long time because I don't care too much. I just know it's always a long wait. Sylveon, I get comfortable and I I, uh, I get comfortable and I don't think about it too much. I focus on whatever new thing there is with cards instead of worrying about the cards coming back. But yeah, I think they state it somewhere on their website how long it's expected to take. But that number get, can get updated easily. Okay, Christian Styles. So it's not it's not perfectly reliable is what I'm trying to say. Let's find your bag, Mr. Christian. He says, I have a bag. Here we are, Christian Styles. There we go. Shane Childers says, I would like eight of the Digimon packs. Shane, what's up, Shane? That's right, we got Digimons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. How's it going, man? Mm -hmm. Sneep. Definitely worth looking at the grading websites to know what to expect. Sneep. Pokemon are made by the government. Sneep. Sneep. All right. Shane Childers. You ready? You've got Rusty Tyranomon. Woo. Very nice. It says SR. Rusty Tyranomon. I think that means secret rare, guys. He also pulls Omnimon. You did it! Hold on, get that out of the way. The card list. That's also listed as SR. Omnimon and Tyranomon. Here's Flower Cannon and TK Takaishi. Takaishi. Omnimon is the best hit. Awesome. Glad to see you getting the, the uh, best pull. Oh, man, you're actually doing very well. Here's the Lilithmon as well. Remember, we were looking up Lilithmon, and she was going for like a couple hundred dollars as a 10. So there you go. <laughs> Very good. Very simple. Here's Ikakumon. Ikakumon. I made my money back raw. Very nice. I know. That doesn't happen very often. Here's Yokomon. He looks like a Yokomon. Oops. That means he pulled really, really well tonight, guys. <laughs> when you can make your money back on the raw card, you're doing pretty good. You got another hit. Venom Miotismon. What? It's like a, some kind of full art. Okay, and... Oh, that pack's still a little closed. All right, here we are. There we go. Metal Tyranimon and Izzy Uzumi. Woohoo! All right, I'll go ahead and toss these down in the... Wow, that book box is... The junk book box is extra full tonight. Mr. Shane, what a nice round for you that was. Samuel, Shane Childers, you got two of the Lilith Mons. Damn, who's this Hoochie Mama? I don't know any Pokemons that turn into this. I guess only Digimons do that. Oh, my Lord. Where's Mormon? <laughs> I don't know any sexy Pokemons. I mean, other than Ditto. 
Danny Mark says, hey, mister, here's the 27 for sending it off to be graded. I have a $6 credit. Use a dollar from that to make it 28. And with the extra five on top, I will take a pack of battle styles. Okay. So this is for Danny Marks. And Danny Marks wants to do a grade. She's bussing. Ditto can turn into Misty. So we've heard, but we don't know. Here's Stoutland. How can I buy some cards for you? Can you ship to India? Uh, I have shipped to India once. Yeah, one guy was from India, and I shipped to him before. And uh, he still has some cards over here because he kept ordering. So he, he's ready. He needs to be shipped again, actually. So Danny Marks. We're going to send this off CGC Tier 1, it sounds like. Go ahead and grab a card grader. So your card goes in here. There we go. Danny Marks. C1. All right, there we go. Danny Marks. Very nice. Now we've got Alexander Hewitt. He says 10 more team up. All right, Alexander Hewitt. Woo. Peyton says night, y'all. Good luck, everyone. That's right. So 10 more team ups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, some more team ups. Love team ups. You're worried about Alex? Alex, no! <laughs> Too many options of what to sink my money into here. There are a lot of options. If you have a favorite Pokemon, you can look up what each set offers on the website Pokelector. So you can look up the different sets. And then I kind of poke, I kind of point out the sets that I think are the best. So you can take a look at the top choice sets if you want to. So here's Articuno. Kaka! That's cold. Snorlax Eevee. All right. Very gradable card. Cold. This guy, whose name I don't know. Cold. Here's Electrode. Hmm, that's not Charizard. Three Hollows, no Charizards, huh? We want more Charizards. Oh, man, this is an unlucky round, I think. <laughs> As bound to happen eventually, Mr. Alexander. That's a tough round. No luck in that round of 10. The other rounds were way better. But it's bound to happen. One custom booster as well. Let's get you that custom booster. I apologize. One custom booster. Do, 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 do. Oh, even the custom booster is terrible. I'm sorry. That is a tough round, Mr. Alexander. I'm sorry. Can you check for the custom as well? Says Alexander Hewitt. I sure can. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's a tough one. Probably the next round. We got an order from Joey Artiega, but Joey Artiega didn't tell me what it is he wanted in the message. So Joey Artiega, you're probably watching, but I'm gonna do a refund because uh, that's kind of how it works. On, on PayPal, I need you to write me a message and I could have you tell me here in YouTube chat, but the problem is people can impersonate you on YouTube, okay? So we don't want that to happen. So you're gonna be uh, issued a refund? All right, you've been refunded. All right, there we go. And Devin Kawamura, who says, send the energy card for CGC Tier 1. Sounds good. That's what I would do. Whew. Okay, good night, everyone. Sweet dreams. I live in L.A. <laughs> nice. And let's grab our... Let's grab our card grader. There we go. That refund was fast. Yeah, he can um he can still order cards if he wants. But I really ought to have a very defined way of doing things. Kawamura. And no message is real simple. It's just automatic refund. That's how it should be. There you go, Mr. Devin. Is there a way I can make sure you get the message? 
yeah, uh, PayPal gives you an option to write a, write a message. So when you're making the payment, there's a little box that tells you that you can write a message, okay? So it's right there when you're making the order. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and refresh. When you PayPal, it will ask. Do, do, oh, oh, Toro Teal, I forgot about this. I'm sorry, Toro Teal, you have $130 of store credit. There we go. Toro Teal was doing some uh, graphic design for me and uh, she is accepting $130 of store credit. There you go. Forgot about that. <laughs> All right. Even though my head is hurting, your head is not allowed to hurt. It is forbidden. So, where are we? Shane Childers, Danny Marks, Alexander Hewitt, Joey Ortega, Devin Kawamura, Shane Childers. I would like 10 of the King's Court. Pull me a winged dragon of raw. All right, you got it. Well, we haven't seen one come out of the box, so maybe you've got a chance. Who knows? So this is for Mr. Shane Childers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow. We had exactly 10 packs left in that box. So this is for Shane Childers, and there really are some extremely expensive cards in this set. Uh, there's some cards going for like 500. Sleep. Sleep. Your content's relaxing. Thanks, man. Sneep. All right. And one more. Sneep. All right. All sneaked up. Lots of sneeping. Tons of sneeping. Mr. Shane, you pull. Lightning storm. Ooh, it's a lightning storm. I lost my job and house. Crazy few months. What? Are you serious? Holy crystal girl. Holy moly, man. If that's true, I'm very sorry. That sounds awful. Hope you get it all back together somehow. Magnet induction. You know, I was talking to my wife about that in 2008. I was like, we underestimate how wrecked people were during 2008 when they lost their homes and their... Because back in 2008, I was dirt poor anyways. I had nothing. So in 2008, I was young and I had nothing. I had nothing to lose. Uh, but now I'm a bit older and I got plenty to lose now. If I lost my home today, it would like, it would make me feel so bad if I lost my home. So I was thinking about all the people that lost their homes in 2008 to foreclosure. Joker's wild. Uh, Mr. Dave Charmander, talk to me about that on Discord. Okay, Mr. Rivalry of Warlords. You've done well. That's going to be a collector's rare, a collector art. So take a close look, guys. It's one of those new textured cards. Shane, tonight's your night, man. You're doing well. Look at that. He says, I made my money back raw again. Very good, man. Rivalry of Warlords. Number 49, Fortune Tune. And World Legacy Guard Dragon. So you lost your job and home, yet you're here. Well, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's not that hard to access the internet. There's all there's all kinds of ways to access the internet. Just because you lose your home doesn't mean you got to give up your cell phone necessarily. And uh, you know, if he really did lose his job in his home, you know, that's really rough. So I hope he, I hope it all gets comes back together. All right, here we are. I was homeless for a little while, right when I left home when I was 17, too young to buy a condo or anything like that, or not a condo, an apartment. Mr. Shane, let me grab your bag. Uh, Mr. Dave Muller, check your PayPal for refunds, okay? Next up, we have Cheese. Cheese says, one, live custom. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This is how rude. I was asking if you got to my order. I placed two orders tonight. I was away a little while. Just asking if the line is long. Mr. Dave Muller, uh, I only saw one order. It was an $11 order. That's been refunded. I'll double check for a second one. That's also going to be refunded. And you'll want to talk to me in Discord, okay? Mr. Cheese, just one hollow. Let me see if I can see another one for you. I didn't even see a second one, but we'll go. Ch I'll tell you what. I'll go type your name in real fast. 
So we'll do a quick search for you. Oh, it should be under David, not Dave. <laughs> Mr. Dave Muller, you've done a single order tonight. I'm, I'm looking at all of your, your orders right now. You've, you're, you have one order tonight at uh, 12.33 a.m. And then your the order before that was July 17th. And we're going to sort the thing out that you mentioned. So uh, I've gone ahead and refined the current order because we don't want to do any more stuff until it's all sorted. Okay, there you go, Mr. Dave. i blessed to have a supportive family. I'm okay, guys, and so is my family. Might not have my space. That is that is a good thing to have somebody who can help you. Yeah, that was actually a scary part of my... Um, that was a scary part of my story growing up. So when I left home, I essentially ran away from home. And, you know, if I really had a tough time, I probably could have asked my parents for help. But the way I saw it, uh, because the relationship was so broken down, uh, if I, you know, if I failed in life and I, I didn't have enough money to support myself, I was just going to be living outside, you know what I mean? So let's see. Yeah, I probably could have come. I probably could have gone back and be like, oh, I'm a failure. Save me. <laughs> but, you know, I wasn't going to let that happen. No way. <laughs> okay, so. We had Shane, we had Mr. Cheese open alive. Now we have Tammy, 10 EV heroes. Hopefully won't be as unlucky. Oh, Tammy, these will be the lucky ones. All right, Tammy Lowe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Miss Tammy. Wait, literally like very little wait time. What the? That's right. Well, it's, uh, you know, we're three hours in. We're three minutes away from the three hour mark. So it's, it's pretty much it's the end of the night. A lot of people go to bed on the weekdays. You know what I mean? I have two kids and two year old and three, almost four. So I have to do what I do to make sure they're good. Even if it means asking family for help. You got some kids, a two and a three year old. Oh man. Well, I'm glad your family's there to help you out. Yeah, that's lucky, man. All right, let's see. Tammy Lowe. Let's see what you pull. We got Eldegoss. Here's a cold one. Sylveon. Did your parents not like you or was the relationship just bad? Uh, oh, it was so bad, man. <laughs> uh, and I didn't like that. Oh! Look at this. Ultra Rare Inteleon. Well... Uh, Miss Toratil, you did not get an Eevee Lucian, but you got a golden shiny Inteleon. Ooh. Here's a Pikachu. Surprise Pikachu. Dude, why haven't they made the surprise Pikachu face a card? That should definitely be a card. People probably pay so much money to have that. And then they should only make like a hundred of them or something like that. You know what I mean? That'd be amazing. Uh, no, it was pretty bad. And, you know, I could, dude, I could like write a whole book on it. It goes for so long. But uh, basically, my parents, uh, they were, they actually, you know, I thought my mom was really bad. My dad ended up being real bad too. They weren't, they weren't good people basically is what it comes down to. My, my parents were bad people and you know, that maybe that's hard to imagine, but there's people out there in the world who aren't that good and they have kids. And, uh, I was one of those kids to a bad parent. So at about 17 years old, I started figuring it out. I think I figured it out faster than my other siblings did. Maybe I, I think I have a, you know, I think this is something about me, but I think I, I have a good sense of awareness. I think it develops pretty fast. And uh, so I ended up leaving. And I believe every single kid ran away from home in my family of 11 kids. Jessica married out, so she didn't run away. She was the oldest kid. She just got married and left. Erica left. Blake left. Blake went to the Air Force. Jacob left. Olivia ran away. Luke ran away. I know because he was living with one of my sisters when he ran away. I was told Chris and Brianna ran away. Yeah, pretty much the entire family left in a bad way. It was not good. Tammy Lowe. But you don't want to hear about my tragic backstory. Let's open some Pokemons. <laughs> 
So that's for Tammy Lowe. Did I say Toro Teal? Why did I say Toro Teal? You know why? I'll tell you why. Because Tammy Lowe and Toro Teal have roughly the same sized bag and they have a T at the beginning of their name and their bags are literally right next to each other in the box. So this is for Tammy Lowe, not Toro Teal. I apologize. <laughs> I've probably been saying, I've probably been saying Toro Teal on accident. I don't know if I have, but this is Tammy Lowe's order. Congratulations, Tammy. 11 kids running away sounds interesting. Yeah, pretty much all the children ran away from home eventually when they got old enough. You can't run away when you're young. You got to get old enough to run away. And uh, from my understanding, none of the kids talk to my parents anymore, and I don't know what the parents do. We don't even talk to each other. The kids barely talk to each other. I talk to one sister, and I got one brother who I'll, I'll talk to as well, but I, I don't really talk to either of them that much either. Like, I've, I talk to them like once, maybe a couple months. And it's just like over Facebook, and it's just like a few words to get the news. Christian Styles says five more Evos, Evies. For Mr. Christian, oh, Christian, I apologize. Tammy might have just sniped you. Tammy's been the victim of sniping many times, so she's very familiar with what you're about to go through. So here's five packs, and who knows? Maybe, you know, that was an ultra rare. Maybe there was a secret rare in here as well. So let's see what we got. Sneep. Very familiar. <laughs> That's right. Mister used to talk to me all the time, but not anymore. I'm so sorry, Cheese. Take me back. <laughs> Here's a Zorork. And... Oh, Pikachu. <laughs> Do you have your parents' number? I don't know their number. I don't know where they live. I don't know what they look like. I haven't seen them in that long. They probably look all old and gray. All right, Christian Styles. Here's your bag. Honestly, I think someone stole them. Here we are. Boop. Mister has many things to do. I do have many things to do. Here's Alexander Hewitt. One more roll of the dice. Ten team up and one custom booster. You got it, mister. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Mister, were they like criminals or drugs or just bad people? Uh, you know, my dad ended up being kind of criminal and uh, my mom was a bad person. Yeah, my dad got in trouble. Let's see, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Were you heavily into Pokemon when you left home? Sadly, when I left home, I was not. Uh, Pokemon cards in my neighborhood had kind of died down. I think this happened for a lot of collectors. They they remember collecting, <clears throat> but there was a point where they stopped. I had a big folder full of really awesome cards that I worked really hard collecting, and I opened so many booster packs. But when I left home, uh, I left in a completely unplanned way, and I left in a single day and never went back. So the way it worked was I I had my clothing, and I had I grabbed a <clears throat> I grabbed a piece of luggage. And then I put some clothing in it and a few keepsakes. And unfortunately, one of those keepsakes was not uh, my Pokemon cards. It should have been. Uh, and then I I left, and that was the end of it. So it's just like, boom, like in one day. So, Mr. Alexander, have you ever snipped a card? What? Uh, I've never snipped a card. If they have tattoos, they're bad people. <laughs> well, neither of my parents had tattoos. Well, no, that's not true. Actually, my dad does have a tattoo from back when he was in the Navy. Cold. So your cards are still there? No, not at all. They, I, you know, they probably sold them or to something. I'm, I'm sure they're not there. Gengar. Here's Gengar Mimikyu. He snipped an energy card. That's right. I snipped two Charizards. Is there a long wait? Well, we're at 184 minutes, and I'd really like to wrap up tonight because I have something real important to work on. Uh, so we're going to say no more orders at this point. Okay, guys? No more orders. You're the MVP. I don't know what that means. What do we got? We got, oh, Bill. Here's a cold one. And Electrode. All right. No crazy pulls on that round either, but... The Gengar and the Latios, Latios are actually very nice. Both of those are very gradable. Popular Pokemon cards, and the English version of them is extremely expensive. All right, here we are. Everyone's like all interested. 
So, what happened? <laughs> really good things. Now we got Joey, three, shining face. What's up, Joey? First bag, nice to meet you. Are you a brother of somebody else who opens on this channel? What kind of candy do you want me to ship you? Um, what kind of candy? I want the candy that has little scorpions on the inside. <laughs> Send me candy of your people, the Swedish people. Did you start working after you left home? How did you survive? That's a good question. So what happened was I actually had some savings because I was really young, obviously, but I was homeschooled throughout my life. And what that really meant was I wasn't really educated at all. My homeschooling was my mom threw a book at us and said, here, learn this. And I didn't. Uh, I didn't do any homeschooling. Basically, in my last years, what you guys would have been doing at, at your high school, you would have been in like your senior class and stuff like that. All I was doing was working for my dad. My dad owned a home business and it was a very successful little home business and he was paying me to work for him. So I was working for my dad uh, since the age of 13 and I was a prolific saver of money. So when I left home, I actually had some cash. Grimmel Snarl uh, Full Art. But when you leave home at the age of 17, you're not old enough to get a, an apartment. So I was sort of doing this thing where... Uh, I was just sort of living at the library, actually. So yeah, I would just live at the library, basically. They had air conditioning and you needed air conditioning. And there, was, there were nights where I just slept outside and you know, you just slept wherever you found where you didn't think the bugs were gonna crawl on you and you didn't think that you were gonna get caught by the police because you you're not supposed to do that. So I did that for a very brief amount of time because then I turned 18 and, uh, oh, and I was applying for jobs like crazy. I was applying everywhere for a job once I left. Because once I left home, I, I immediately stopped working for my dad too, right? So I was working for him. And then when I left, I immediately stopped working for him. Uh, so I had a little bit of money for food and drink and to, to stay as comfortable as I could. Uh, and then, so I turned 18 pretty fast after leaving and because it was summertime. And so what happens then is I, I pick up a job at Target pretty quickly, actually. And... I feel like I was lucky to have actually on my on my resume all of the uh, all the information that I'd worked at my dad's small business for all those years. Because once I went into that interview, I was I was fairly confident. Like I was confident that I was a hard worker, and even though socially I was very like what would be the word like I just hadn't had too many experiences like this in life. Like when you've ran away from home, how do you face the interviewer and be like, oh yeah, my life's my life is, is in tatters right now. Please give me this job so that I'm not homeless. You know what I mean? So it's really difficult actually to kind of keep your composure in those kind of interviews, but I did. And uh, I ended up getting a job at Target as a early morning uh, logistics uh, truck thrower, basically. You just go into a truck and, and pick up boxes all day. And that was my first job. And I did that job for like three or four years before I moved on to Sam's Club. But yeah, so once I had a job at, at Target and I was 18, I was eligible to get my own apartment. And I did right away in a really shady apartment. It's like the cheapest studio apartment in the area. Super shady. And I had a broken car and I would I would sometimes not even be able to use it to get to work. I'd have to like bike to work. I think you forgot my custom booster. Oh, I might have forgotten your custom booster. Hold on. One team up and one custom booster. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm a little distracted. Alexander Hewitt, your custom booster. Do, 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 do. Oh my gosh. And it's one ETB of Shining Fates. Holy, well, we're going to have to get you that now. So let me go ahead and get this to Joey Artiego, and then we'll get you your ETB of Shiny Fates. Here we are. Yeah, I was a little distracted. <laughs> All right. Joey. Mr. is made in America's success story. Right. Uh, you know, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I really did go from a really unhappy and, and extremely poor life to having a degree and having all kinds of job opportunities and, and now doing this and being able to work on YouTube. I, when, I, when I hear people who have very negative perspectives about being able to reach some sort of success in life, I don't empathize with them. I just feel like, Man, you just gotta you just gotta try or something. I don't know. You gotta just put a little more effort in or something. 
But but that's one way of looking at the world, and and people get annoyed when you talk that way. They're like, oh well, you don't understand. The whole world is 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 a, uh, the system is gamed against me or something like that. You know what I mean? I, I don't relate to that because I don't think I could have been in a more desperate time in life uh, than the last you know like ten years, and and still turned out okay. So it's it's hard for me to relate to those ideas, those sort of defeatist ideas, like oh well you'll never make it. You know, it's like, well, I didn't have any family help at all. I didn't have any government help. I didn't even know you could get government help. So I found out much, much, much later that when you are a kid in my situation, I found out you can go to the government and ask for help. I didn't know that. So I did the whole thing by myself. I didn't know there was government help. All right. So a holy TB. Here we are. And here is the EV VMAX. A lot of people that say they are into drugs, sadly. What? Here you are. Yeah, that is something I, I heavily avoided during my, my whole catastrophe of uh, trying to recover from leaving home. So I stayed far, far away from any kind of drug because I, I figured it would ruin my brain. And I was really worried about that the whole time I was worried. So, yeah, I started working at Target in the log logistics job, and I was just barely paying rent is how it felt. Because you got rent, you got car insurance as a young man, you have a broken car, you got to feed yourself, you got to clothe yourself, and you're only 18 years old trying to do this. It's actually really kind of hard to do that and have any money left over at the age of 18, you know? <clears throat> so I was, I was struggling. And I ended up picking up a second job is what I ended up doing because I wasn't going to school. So I picked up a second job at Sears. So for a while, I was working two jobs. They were both logistics jobs. And I was like, I had never been more fit in my life than when I was doing this. But what I would do is I would throw boxes from 4 a.m. in the morning to 12 p.m. for Target. And then right after I'm done with Target, I go right over to Sears and do the exact same job over again. So for Sears, I did the same job. I unloaded trucks. So I unloaded trucks for like... It was like part-time at Sears. It was full-time at Target. So it'd be like eight hours and then four to six hours more. And I just did that every day and saved up as much money as I could. And I like, I actually remember my diet from that time because it was like so gross. I ate nothing but carrots. I had carrots and hot dogs and that was like all I cooked and, and like pizza rolls. I didn't eat anything yummy at all. You know, I didn't have steak. Now I have steak. <laughs> like if I want to go to the grocery store and have steak, I just go get some. But back then I was so desperate to make it, you know, to have enough money to go to school or something like that. I was, uh, I, I lived horribly. I had like one pair of sandals for 12 years. And then I had my work shoes and that was it. So I had one pair of sandals and that was all I wore. I didn't go to movies. I didn't buy anything. I didn't have games for a long time after I left home. So I love video gaming. Uh, you know, I would game like eight hours a day, but when I left home, I didn't have anything for a really long time until I finally bought a PC, but that was like years after I left. Do drugs. Okay. <laughs> you did it. You got the message. Santa Scorch. Woo. All right. You got your Santa Scorch shiny. Ooh. Very nice. Buzel and Rillaboom. Uh, you know, another hard thing is just like trying to make friends or, or girlfriends or anything like that uh, for a little while, I'd say maybe one to two years after I left home, it was really hard to just talk and be normal to people because it's like something you guys may have never experienced in life. So if you have like a really traumatic childhood and a really messed up family, everyone around you seems to have normal families. And the first thing they want to know about you, hey, who's your family? Who's your friends? You know? So, and especially with girlfriends, like, how are you supposed to introduce yourself and be like, yeah, I'm kind of a loner. I live completely on my own because of my fricked up family. You know what I mean? So it's actually kind of hard because do I have a six pack? I have a six pack of Pokemons. So it's, it's hard to do things when you're in such a difficult position. And that's something I totally relate to people on. So when I hear about the struggles of poor people, it's like, well, I know the struggles because I was there. So when I hear people talk about all that, I know there's a lot of fine detail that maybe other people don't pick up on. You know, like how do you, how are you supposed to be confident around a girl 
when your whole background is horrible. It's horrible. It looks horrible to have a family that's so bad that you leave them. And it's horrible to have no money. You know what I mean? Nobody is impressed by you when you have no money. So, I, you know, I've got all these Pokemon cards today and it feels great. Uh, and everyone's like, oh, he's Pokey Rich. But, you know, I spent most of my life with very, very, very little money. And especially early on. So, I, you know, this is all new to me. Having, having like some cash around to do anything I want with. But, you know, in the past, I knew what it was like to go around and just have nothing at all. And it's kind of annoying because, uh, you know, talks about money, uh, financial ideas, they're, they're a very common subject that talk about these days. And I feel like, I feel like there are people who actually do come from kind of like middle class wealth or upper class wealth. And they have like these ideas that I disagree with. And I feel like they've never actually been poor. So they, they don't have that other perspective. So this is for Mr. Alexander. I'm, I'm so glad you caught me and told me to check that live custom booster pack. Here we are. But yeah, I mean, it's it, especially right after I left home, it was so hard to talk to girls because it's like, what are you gonna offer them? You don't have any prospects and you look like, you look like the kind of person I wouldn't want my own daughter to date. You know what I mean? So like, how are you gonna tell the dad? Oh yeah, here I am. You know what I mean? So that's difficult. Jordan says, when did you start buying Pokemon cards after you left home? Do you plan on taking it as far as you have today? Uh, I started buying them a little over two years ago. And uh, it was Unified Minds had just come out. Okay, so it might have been about, it might have been just about two years ago. No, it was actually slightly before Unified Minds. Unified Minds was the next set to come out. And uh, so it's just roughly about two years. Yeah, roughly two years ago. Okay, now we have... Eric Lovato, who wants two team-ups. You got it, Eric. Ooh. Your first set was Detective Pikachu. I think that's right. Yeah, Detective Pikachu, because that's what Mary was asking me to buy. Yeah, Mary was watching my Game Economist live streams, and she made a big donation and said, hey, go get some Detective Pikachus. What's my Zodiac? I don't even know how you would look that up. Ah! Oh! What is this snipe? Oh, I'm sorry, Alexander. That's a straight snipe out of the team-up box. I think you were over there opening a bunch. It's a good thing you got that ETB, huh? <laughs> so that's for Eric Lovato. Mr. Eric. Holy. Hyper Rare Celebi Venusaur. Jeez Louise, man. All right, I'm going to go ahead and refresh. Yeah, there were some really depressing moments. I think one of the most depressing times for me was when I was doing both jobs. And you ever heard that expression, all work, no play makes Jack a dull boy? Oh, it couldn't have been more true for me. I had no friends, I had no girlfriends, I had no belongings. I went to work at Target and then I went, went to work at Sears every day and I would be completely physically exhausted. I don't, some of you guys know what this feels like, but if you've ever been like in a bad mood and then completely physically exhausted, exhausted by something you had to do, it's like super depressing. It's like depressing in a way that you haven't experienced physiologically until you do. And I would go to the mall because the Sears was at the mall. And I'd go to the courtroom and I'd eat fresh Taco Bell. The Taco Bell would open uh, and they'd have fresh uh, whatever beans or whatever. And so I'd get fresh Taco Bell at the court court uh the uh, food court and i'd people watch and you know you'd see like these moms hugging their kids and i'm sitting there so it was it was awfully depressing like just normal people and normal families all right let's go ahead and refresh fresh taco bell mm. if you haven't had it it's better than the nasty taco bell you get when they're closing okay let's see so this will be the last round guys Let's see what we got. We got a few more orders. We have Mr. Shane. He would like two live custom boosters. Oh, Mr. Shane. Woo! Do, 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 do. Pokemon Center Lady and do, 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 do. Charmander. Check my messages on Discord. I think you'll like it. Spicy Vintage Steel Booster Boxes. I will definitely take a minute and check that out, Miss Mary. Uh, I'm always behind on my messages, though. There, there's a point where I step away from them. I make like a conscious decision because <laughs> I get too many these days. Here we go. So if I'm ever slow to answer a message, it's not because I'm ignoring anyone. I'm just taking a break from my computer. 
Eating alone is traumatizing. Yeah, so I would like eat alone in the, the food court and just watch all these families go by being normal. Dude, it was awful. All right. Team Rocket Grunt. He says, let me get another wig pack and a chilling rain. There was like a girl at Sears that would uh, flirt with me pretty openly, but it's like, I couldn't talk to her. I just, I didn't feel like I could, you know, like life felt too messed up to talk to her. A wig pack and a chilling grain. How many spots left for the gym challenge large? It's very close. I believe about four. Are you ready? Team Rocket Grunt. Doot, 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 doot. Oh, PSA nine, number 205. Why are you doing very well? Number 205. Hey, that's Galarian Berserker. Ooh. Team Rocket Grunt. She wanted some D. She probably did. Uh, I was just saying earlier, I was probably as fit as I'd ever been in my life because all I did was I'd throw one truck that was physically exhausting and then I'd throw another truck and be even more physically exhausted. So it was like my job to work out and I was very fit at the time. And uh, I would have been 18. You know, that's when all guys are most fizz when we're 18. And that's just how your physiology works. Bedrill. And uh, yeah, you know, there, and she wouldn't be the only one. There would be a girl at Target as well who would I eventually, I'd date her, but not not right away. Bedrill, look at this. But it's like, I couldn't talk to her, you know? I couldn't just be normal because it's like life was too messed up at the time. It just wasn't going to happen. I was like, no, I need some time. All right, next up, we've got... Luciano Niederman, he says, one live custom booster. Thanks, back should be Luciano. Oh, Mr. Luciano, you might have just missed that slab. Doot, 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 doot. I'll tear you. She wanted to touch her boxers. That's right. Mr. Luciano. Live customs are killing me. I know. <laughs> Liam Luciano. Luciano Niederman, you got it. Can I get store credit for the Meowth? We could definitely talk about it. Uh, depends on how much you're looking for. Next up, we got Danny Marks, who says, I apologize for the confusion. I'm canceling on the grading. If you can do me a favor and do the live shipping for six and the 23 that's left, leave it as store credit. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. So, Mr. Danny Marks, let's get this sorted out. So, Danny Marks sa is saying, you know what? Let's not grade this. So, we're going to go ahead and pull her out. Boop. And we're gonna grab your bag. And he says, go ahead and live ship me and then give me $23 of store credit. I think we could do that. You want the Meowth? Oh, hold on. Danny Marks has a card. Here you go, Mr. Danny. There we go. And let me go get you a label. See if we've shipped you before. It looks like we have. Danny Marks, your address starts with the nine. And print. I will sign a pair of panties when I send you the candy. Thank you, Mary. Finally, a gift. Finally. That was all I ever wanted. Oof. There you go, Danny. Going to make sure the panties have poop stain as well. Oh my gosh, you know me too well. <laughs> All right, and that's gonna be the end of the live stream. I said that we were gonna be done after that refresh. Oh, wait a second, there's a, I'm sorry, there's a Matthew, Ma Ma uh, I can't say his name. Mangiello, Mangiello? Hold on, let's, let's see, I'm refreshing it right now. We talking no money at all? What'd he say? Or just not rich? Who, who doesn't have any money at all? Matthew Mangiello says one live custom booster and two matchless fighters. You got it, Matthew. So here are your two matchless fighters, and here is your live custom. Ooh. Do, 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 do. Suicune Hollow. Hey, that's actually kind of nice. You know, give that 20 years. That'll probably be worth something. Just just predicting. Doesn't sound like, you know, it's, it's like, oh, whatever. But, I mean, it'll happen. It'll happen. 20 years will pass by, and people will be like, where's that Suicune from? Like 20 years ago. Cold and Beedrill. Oof. Oof. Mr. Mangiello, that is a tough round. And your bag is over on the side. 
Mr. Matthew. Here we go. Let's take these out. We're talking in the context of the story he's telling. He's talking about meeting people as a young man and trying to date other people and not having a job or a good job. Yeah, back in the back in the day, back in the good old days when I was 18 years old. <clears throat> 18 years old and not out of shape. <laughs> now I'm out of shape. Now I'm now I sit in the chair all day for work. Very different. All right. My dad got out of his gate and he spent my money on poker. <sighs> I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> he sent your he spent your money on poker? That sucks, man. All right, guys. Well, we're wrapping up. I want to thank you all for watching. If you guys enjoyed the live stream, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button as we try to reach 100,000 subscribers. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow night, roughly the same time, okay? See you later.